The eyes of Texas will be focused tonight on Texas Stadium in the Dallas suburb of Irving for the 90th meeting in a storied NFL rivalry. The big event tonight is NBC's Sunday Night Football. The red carpet is DC. This is the game. degrees and humid in Irving, Texas, out onto the field at Texas Stadium come the Dallas Cowboys. And on this opening night, they're ready to face Eli Manning and the New York Giants on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels along with John Madden, Andrew Kramer, welcome to Irving, Texas. The Giants come in off an 8-8 eight and eight season, 6-2 and two to start, then 2-6. and six. Lost a wild card playoff game to Philadelphia, and of course lost Tiki Barber, who announced his retirement in the middle of the season. Tiki now part of our NBC crew. His understudy now becomes the main man. While a lot of people are looking at Eli Manning, they have to take a look at Brandon Jacobs. You can't miss him. 264 pounds. He becomes the featured back, John. Tom Coughlin said to us last night, this will be a big night for Brandon Jacobs. This is going to be a big night for a lot of New York Giants. Right, and I can see Brandon Jacobs having a big night. But if he's going to, I know that big running backs have big times in the second half. So if, he, if he's going to be big, it's in the third quarter, it's in the fourth quarter, so after you wear that defense down a little. And the first thing that has to happen is Eli Manning has to play well. The passing game has to go well. The pass protection has to be good because they have to get yardage and chunks, loosen up the defense a little, and then you can unleash Brandon Jacobs. It's already been a pretty good week one for the Manning family. Peyton the other night against New Orleans. Now Dallas. Bill Parcells comes in. Helps to resurrect the franchise, leads them to the playoffs twice in four years. They still haven't won a playoff game in over a decade. He left them with a pretty good team, but the big question here is how good are the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I think it's a base to be pretty good, and uh, Wade Phillips is going to come in, and I think the the defense will be good under him because I mean he's a defensive coach and you know he does some very good things. Now tonight they're going to struggle. They don't have Terrence Newman, so the defense will hurt a little tonight. And offensively, I think they have the parts. I think Tony Romo is a real deal. He moves well, gets rid of the ball quickly, and he has Terrell Owens out there, and that is a pretty good thing. Tony Romo played well enough over a short stretch last year to go to the Pro Bowl, but the last time we saw Tony Romo, he was juggling this snap in the wild card game. It's a good thing he has selective amnesia. Here we go. NBC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Back we come to Texas Stadium. Tony Romo started last season as the number two quarterback behind Drew Bledsoe. Now he starts on opening night in 07. He's down on the field as we welcome in Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Last season you experienced the highest of highs, never having had taken a regular season snap to the Pro Bowl, and then the lowest of lows the way the season ended in Seattle. How do you build on last season? 
Uh, you just get back to work and you fight your butt off in the off season and you get ready for tonight and hopefully a good season. You've got a first-time offensive coordinator in Jason Garrett, a former quarterback himself. What does he bring to your game? Well, I just think he tries to keep everything real tight. You know, know where you're going to go. Get down to the checkdowns when you got them, and you know, just go play football and have fun. All right, Tony. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew. 78 degrees here in Irving, Texas. It has been a lot hotter over the past couple of days. A lot of cloud cover though tonight. Should have some rain a little bit later, is what uh, they're telling us. And as usual for early September, humid. Great story, and we'll detail it halftime and into the, the second half there. Everson Walls and Ron Springs, teammates with the Cowboys in the early 80s, and Everson Walls donated his kidney. Ron Springs had been on that transplant list for about three years and uh, made that sacrifice, and they come out tonight as the honorary Cowboy captains. Yeah, and that's great. I'm, I'm just so glad to, to see Ron Springs out there and Everson Walls and yeah, you know, we talked about this before. There's been so many negative stories in the offseason. So many things. What's wrong with football? What's wrong with football players? This is what's right about it. And Wade Phillips takes over as the coach of the Cowboys, a native Texan who has coached the Denver Broncos, has coached the Buffalo Bills, and on two occasions was an interim coach, once in New Orleans, once in Atlanta. So in effect, for the fifth time, Wade Phillips coaches a different team in the National Football League. And Tom Coughlin, who coached at Jacksonville, and then he was let go there, spent a year out of football, got the Giant job, begins his fourth season, and the Giants to receive a kick. And Ahmad Bradshaw, a seventh-round draft choice out of Marshall, who's made the team, makes his NFL debut by taking it from the one up to the 26-yard line, and then he goes down, and he was down. The whistle had blown. The ball came loose, but after Ed Hockley's crew had blown the whistle, the Giants will have it at the 26-yard line. Here comes Manning. Let's take a look at the Giants starters. Eli Manning, Ole Miss. Brandon Jacobs, Southern Illinois. Plexico Burris, Michigan State. Monty Toomer, University of Michigan. Jeremy Shockey. University of Miami. Michael Matthews, Georgia Tech. Dave Deal, University of Chief of Mine, Edward. Rich Seibert, Western Illinois. John O'Hara, Rutgers. Chris Snake, Boston College. Marie McKenzie, Penn State. Dave Deal is the new left tackle. Luke Pettigo was let go, winds up in Tampa. Deal moves from left guard to left tackle. And of course, Jacobs is the big back. And his initial carry of the season will net nothing. He runs right into the middle of that 3-4 line, Jason Ferguson. Let's take a look at the Dallas starters. Marcus Spears, Louisiana State. Jason Ferguson, Georgia. Chris Canty, Wahoo Wah. Anthony Spencer, Purdue. Brady James, LSU. Aiken Adele, Purdue. Marcus Ware, Troy. Jock Reeves, Boilermaker. Roy Williams, Oklahoma. Ken Hamlin, Arkansas. Anthony Henry, South Florida. Wahoo Wah equals Virginia, in case you were wondering. Second down and 10 from the 26-yard line, and Manning will throw it to the outside, and that pass is caught inbounds by Amani Toomer, coming back after ACL surgery, tore up his knee in the middle of last season, comes back, looked pretty good in preseason, and makes a nice catch there, doing a toe dance along the sidelines for 14 yards. You know, and this is a side you would expect the Giants are going to work on because that's where their best corner, Terrence Newman, would play. Terrence Newman and not in this game. And thus Jock Reeves with the coverage. Newman not only their starting corner, but he plays the slot and the nickel and runs back kick, so he's a big loss. They're also minus Greg Ellis. Ellis has not played since rupturing his Achilles last year. Hope to have him back in a couple of weeks. Manning off the play fake, and he's been good on play action in recent seasons to Plexico Burris, and Burris will go all the way to the end zone for a giant touchdown. Anthony Henry with the coverage that time, 60 yards. Thank you very much, says Burris, and a minute and 29 into the game, the Giants take the lead. You know, the first thing, it starts with a good play action pass and good pass protection. Now, one of the things that Brandon Jacobs does there, he's a good pass protector. So they had that, that, that play action pass and let Plexico get deep in behind the safety. 
See the corner bumps him. He gets past the corner in behind the safety. Roy Williams, for some reason, got up there pretty tight. Lawrence Times, formerly of Kansas City, and the snap is bobbled by Jeff Beagles, the punter. And there will be no attempt. It was Jay Alford, the snapper. He's a new snapper. He's a rookie. They lost Ryan Keel to injury before the season. Keel would have normally done the snapping this year, but instead it's Alford, and his first snap goes into the ground. But it's a 60-yarder from Manning to Burris. And just like that, the New York Giants lead the Dallas Cowboys 6 to nothing. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Southwest Airlines with convenient nonstop flights. It's like having your own company plane. By Sprint, the official telecommunications service sponsor of the NFL. By Coors Light Cold Activated Bottle. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is cold and ready for kickoff. And by Toyota. Watch Toyota's line of scrimmage Sunday nights on NBC. Sun going down over the Metroplex. Sun went down on the Cowboys secondary early tonight. Six to nothing. And then the kickoff by Lawrence Tynes results in a touchback. Go back to the snap. Again with Ryan Keel on injured reserve. They go to Jay Alford, a rookie snapper for field goals. And Zach Diassi will be snapping on punch. Right, and you see he one-hopped it in there. And I don't know that Tynes couldn't have kicked that. I mean, had he, you know, but it's a it's a whole timing thing, you know, and he started his movement, and then, you know, you can't stop it and get back and start over again. So the problem with that was basically a bad snap. Third round pick out of Penn State drafted as a defensive tackle. You saw Michael Strahan on the sideline. He won't start the game. He will be playing on third down and maybe every third series or so he'll be into three or four plays. Tony Romo, the quarterback. The running back is Julius Jones, the brother of the Jets, Thomas Jones, up to the 23-yard line. Here is the Dallas starting offense. Tony Romo, Eastern Illinois. Julius Jones, Notre Dame. Oliver Hoyt, NC State. Terrell Owens, Tennessee Chattanooga. Patrick Creighton, Northwestern Oklahoma State. Jason Witten, Tennessee. Logan Allen, Michigan State. Kyle Kozart, Arizona State. Andre Girard, Colorado. Leonard Davis, Texas. Mike Colombo, Boston College. Gain of three for Jones on the first play. Second down and seven now from the 23-yard line. Play fake. That buys Romo some time, but the Giants secondary does its job. And then the pass was to the outside when the intended receiver was cutting the other way, Owens, and also Pisano in the area. The Giants D right now. Justin Tuck. Notre Dame. Barry Cofield, Northwestern. Freya Robbins, Wake Forest. O.C. Manure, Nigeria. Matthias Kiwanuka, Boston College. Antonio Pierce, Mount San Antonio Junior College. Kavika Mitchell, South Florida. R.W. McQuarters, Oklahoma State. James Butler, Georgia Tech. Jabril Wilson, Tennessee. Corey Webster, LSU. Michael There's Strahan's in there, Al. First time on third down, so he missed... Almost all the training camp. He's practiced the last four days. Romo pulls down the high snap and then throws it in between two defenders to Jason Witten, one of the best tight ends in the league, up to the 38. And in Witten tonight and Jeremy Shockey, we're seeing two of the better tight ends in the NFL. 15-yard game. You know, especially if they want to you know, do that cover two stuff or if they want to do anything to Terrell Owens on the outside, you're going to work your tight end. And that's Jason Witten. And you look at who he's, he's working against there, Kiwanuka, you know, who is a linebacker for the first time. And I think that that's going to be his biggest adjustment, playing pass defense and playing a tight end like Jason Witten. Back to the ground again. And it's Bill Wilson coming up from his safety spot to make an ankle tackle and limit the gain to just one. It'll be second down and nine from the 39-yard line. You know, so much for training camp. Uh, we see uh, Plexico Burris doesn't play it down <laughs> in a training camp, but boom, he hits a big one. Randy Moss catches nine passes today. Michael Strahan's in there in the first series rushing. Been a practice for four days. Who needs preseason? That's a nouveau football. <laughs> Starting to believe in it. Second and nine. Jones across the 40. He's up to the 42-yard line. So Jones has already carried the ball three times tonight. The Dallas second back is Marion Barber, who also sees a lot of action. Here's here's Matthias Kiwanuka, who we were talking about earlier, that you know has been playing strong side linebacker. Now, 
When he plays on the tight end, that's one thing. I think he's a little more natural when he can play inside like that and just read the run and just hit it right at the line of scrimmage. But there's so many adjustments for a defensive lineman becoming a linebacker. So you can have Strahan in now. You also have Aaron Ross, their number one draft choice out of Texas, who plays in the nickel here. Romo has time. Romo finds a wide open Witten. So Witten has caught two, both over the middle. That time he was free as a bird, and it's a first down at the 35. The other time Romo was able to wedge it in between two defenders. This time Witten just roaming free for 23. Yeah, and they go three wide receivers, and here's Witten. Here he's he's a guy out there in the in the slot. He's the third guy in. And you see they have the first guy stays outside. He keeps the safeties to the outside. Romo looks them off to the outside and then comes back to the inside to Jason Witten. So if they want to get out there, the quarterback can really help it you know, by, by looking them out there, keeping them out there, and then coming back. Meanwhile, Witten's shaken up. Bent over on the sideline. Crouching on the sideline. Romo slings one, and that's incomplete. The receiver cutting off. The pattern, that's Owens. It'll be second down and 10. Talking about Tony Romo and the way last season ended, and he, he was really moping for about three days. He said he just uh, sat around the apartment. He didn't go anywhere be from the bedroom to the kitchen to the living room. He said that was it. And then he started to come out of it, and a lot of people talked to him. And he's a resilient guy. He's an upbeat kind of guy. And, well, that's all in the past. And look. On opening day, everybody's slate is right clean. You're right, and it doesn't take long to bounce back. I mean, that was three days, but this guy has an abundance of confidence. Fake to Owens and a screen to the left side to Jones. A late developing play, but a successful one for a first down as Jones takes it to the 24-yard line. You know, I think I think you sometimes you'll you'll run those slow developing misdirection plays on an aggressive defense, and that's what the Giants are doing. I mean, they're playing that aggressive defense. They're going to run through the first thing they see, so you fake one way, get them going that way, and then come back with a screen or a reverse or something like that the other way. Whitten out for only a couple of plays. Now he's back in. But OCU Manura is on the Giants' sideline. And this is Jones taking it to the 19-yard line. So a pretty healthy dose of Jones here early on on this first drive, which started at the 20. There's Human Euro. Jones has carried four times and caught one pass. You, know, you mentioned earlier about the humidity here, and I think that I think we're going to see some dehydration and a lot of cramping in this game. Maybe not in the first and second quarter, but in the second half. Not a lot of ventilation in this place. The hole in the roof, but the air is stagnant inside here. Second down and five from the 19-yard line. And Jones with a burst through the middle. So they're exploiting the middle with Jones. With success, the ball to the 13-yard line. First and 10, Dallas. Did you see the size of that Leonard Davis, the, the right guard? I think that's one of the reasons that you're going to run to the inside when you have a guy that's six foot six and 350 pounds, and that's what number 70 is there. That's not a bad place to run. I mean, you get in between, in behind him and Gerard and Kozar, that's not a bad offensive line middle for the Cowboys. Davis picked up from the Arizona Cardinals, one time number one draft choice, and then Jones slips down as he starts to move to the outside, looking to turn the corner. Michael Strahan is there for the tackle. Steve Spagnolo comes over from the Philadelphia Eagles. He's the new defensive coordinator. Tim Lewis had been the defensive coordinator. The Giants have not performed well defensively over the past couple of seasons. Changes had to be made. Steve coached under Jim Johnson in Philadelphia. Defensive backs and then linebackers. Meanwhile, Coughlin has led the team to the playoffs in each of the last two seasons. Second down and 12 now as Jones gets stopped just inside the 15 to 14 yard line. And that's Manny Wright who was picked up in training camp and starts tonight because William Joseph stiffened up before the game. Bad back. So Wright is in there, and he makes the stop. And there's Michael Strahan in there also. Uh, Al, he was in there on that play. You know, you, you thought he was just going to play third down, rush the passer here and there. He's in there in this red zone defense. You, know, you talk about the Giants' defense and how they weren't really very good last year. This was an area where they weren't very good at all, was in the red zone. 
Third and ten out of the shotgun. They had Marion Barber flanking Romo in the backfield. Creighton in the slot to the left. And it's a fade to the end zone intended for Sam Hurd, who would be the number four receiver normally, but number three tonight, Webster, with the coverage on the play. Their minus Terry Glenn had a thousand yard year last year, so they can really pay a lot of attention to Owens, and then Creighton becomes number two, and Hurd becomes number three, and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. And losing Terry Glenn, that's that's their speed guy, too, so that, that has quite an effect on their passing game and their play call. Nick Folk played at Arizona, and they drafted him to be their kicker. Gramatica on injured reserve, and his first attempt in the NFL is a 31-yard field goal attempt that is good. So it's a seven-minute drive. There goes Human Ura back to the dressing room. But the Giants have the early lead, 6-3. to three. Tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by Gillette Deodorant. Looking down into Dealey Plaza and downtown Dallas in the south. Back we come to the suburb of Irving and the kickoff is fielded at the one yard line by the rookie Ahmad Bradshaw and the former Virginia Cavalier brings it back out to the 24 yard line Manning and company will go back to work after a very quick and successful opening touchdown drive six to three Giants what a matchup next Sunday night on Sunday night football the charge go to New England. Chargers start with a win today against Chicago. Patriots look great against the Jets. Andy Moss had a tremendous day. Football night in America to get it started next Sunday night. San Diego at New England. Now you have Jacobs and Ruben Drones in the backfield. He's the fullback. They give it to Brandon Jacobs to the 29. When Manning was throwing that touchdown pass, I mentioned how effective he has been play action over the last three seasons. He loves it. Off that play fake, there he is. A rating of over 100, which is terrific. Without play action, over a three-season period, 67.2. That's a gigantic difference, and it was off a play fake where he hits Burris for the touchdown. Right, and a lot of that play action goes with having a good running game, and a lot of that last year was Tiki Barber, and the other thing is being ahead. You know, when you're behind, it's tough to play action pass. Second down and five. And they'll stop it before the start here as Jason Ferguson came creeping across the line and will be offside against the Dallas Cowboys. But that was a that was a great play action. I mean he you know he just kept those linebackers in there and got Plexico Burris man to man out there on Anthony Henry and threw a perfect pass. Burris did not play. Pre there were two fouls by the defense on the play. Encroachment, nose guard, that's declined. There was also a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness defense, a slap to the helmet. Number 26, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Ken Hamlin, who comes over from the Seattle Seahawks after four seasons in the Northwest. There's Ken Hamlin right there. Plays over. Think. Mm. You, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that you know that he had to call. I mean, the referee mm -hmm. is right there, and you know he does it right in front of Ed Hockley, and you don't leave the referee any room to not call that no. play. Not when you do it right in front of him. Yeah, you almost hit him in doing. It. From the 44-yard line, Manning Stewart drop to the outside. He goes. He hits his tight end, Jeremy Shockey, and he'll always make the defensive backs pay the price. Roy Williams pushes him out of bounds. Let's go to Andrea. Well, it's ironic because before the game, O.C. Umanura told Michael Strahan, don't even Get think about one. playing the, the entire game. And Strahan said, for the first time, I might actually Cowboys listen 22. to him. But now things have changed. O.C. was hit on the side of his left leg. He's in the locker room for x-rays. His return is uncertain, but it definitely looks like Michael Strahan will have to play more tonight. Certainly more than he had anticipated and Tom Coughlin had anticipated. What they pay him for. Yep. <laughs> From the 42, even after the fine. Here's Jacobs. And Jacobs takes it to the 
five yard line. Brandon Jacobs was the short yardage back. He came in. He was the thunder and lightning with Tiki Barber, with Tiki, of course, being the lightning. He's 264 pounds. Played at Coffeyville, Kansas, JC. Then he went to Auburn, where Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown were also playing. So he leaves there. He plays at Southern Illinois. Goes to the Giants. Comes in. Looks like he'll be the kind of guy who'll be, you know, a good number two back through the years. Now all of a sudden he's the main man with Barber having retired. Hey, one thing, he does move the pile. I mean, when he runs, when he runs in there, the piles are going to go backwards. Second and three. Manning feels the pressure. Going to the end zone. Touchdown to Amani Toomer, but no, he is on the white chalk. So Amani Toomer thought he got his feet down. One referee looked as if he saw both feet come in. And, of course, the Giants are telling Tom Coughlin he got them in. Let's challenge this. And, of course, upstairs, they'll take a look at the replay. Tom will get some advice from the coaches upstairs. You take a look. Remember, you have to have possession and both feet in. There's one. No, he nope. doesn't get the second nope. in. That toe of the second foot is on the line. It's funny, Amani Toomer is telling him to challenge it. Jeremy Shockey was right there watching it, and he's saying to challenge it. But there's no way that Tom Coughlin should use a, a waste of challenge here. And he knows that. Tom, Tom knows that upstairs the guys have told him, don't even think about it. You'll waste it. You'll waste nothing that a timeout is costly in the first half, but so why waste the challenge here? You don't have to. Derek Ward is now in the backfield. They toss it to him to the right side, runs into traffic, and the former Jet will pick up about a yard and a half but stop shy of the first down by Brady James. So the Giants come that close to getting another long touchdown, but instead it will be fourth down and a long one at the 34-yard line. You know, you're talking about Brandon Jacobs and, you know, being a pounder inside, you wonder who is going to do the outside running, and that's probably going to be Derek Ward. But this is a big call here for Tom Coughlin because this is not short yardage. This is not a play where you can just quarterback sneak or run it to your tailback up the middle. Not at all, and Dallas is going to take a timeout. So are the Giants going up there to try to draw them offside or what? We'll find out when we come back. Timeout Dallas, 6-3 New York. And that is the new series everybody is talking about. Bionic Woman premieres Wednesday, September 26th here on NBC. Giants line up after the timeout to go for it out of the shotgun on fourth down and two. And indeed they will. Manning stepping up and then the pass is knocked down and incomplete and the Cowboys will take over. Not the worst thing in the world for the Giants. Hamlin breaks it up. I mean, your options there are to try a 52-yard field goal, get Dallas the ball at the 42, or a boost punt. Dallas will take over. Time out. Tony Romo made his starting debut at the end of October last year against Carolina. Went 4-1 and one in those first five starts. But then down the stretch, he was 2-3. and three. The Cowboy defense really didn't do many favors. And then came up short in the wild card game. But those numbers through that uh, early period unless you get him selected for an appearance in the Pro Bowl. Well, he's an exciting guy. You know, I mean, he brings a lot of life to this Dallas offense. And well, like I said earlier, he gets rid of the ball quickly. He can move in the pocket if you converge on your pass rush. He'll get outside by time. He can hurt you in a lot of ways. From the 34, a little spin job, and that doesn't fool the right side of the giant defense. R.W. McCorders hanging right there with Terrell Owens, and those guys go back a ways because they were teammates with the 49ers. Right, and this is a this is a pass that you don't throw into this coverage. I mean, the corner, if you have this type of situation, you can't throw that quick pass because there's no separation at all. I mean, the only time you want to do something like that is when that corner's off. If he's up like that, you have to call that play off. That had no chance at all. <laughs> Second and ten from the 34-yard line. Kill, 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 kill. That's what he should have done on the play before. Kill, 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 kill. And they give it to Jones, following the tight end, Fasano. 
up to the 37. And John, you know, thinking about the the Giants' option, whether they wanted to pooch punt or go for it, which they did and didn't come up with it. You know, one of the things is not only was it a 52-yard field goal, but a rookie snapper who'd already put one into the dirt. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what Tom Coughlin was thinking about. You know, he said, "I saw that ugly extra point stuff, and so I don't want to chance that out here." So I think his choice was, like you said, either go for it on fourth down or some kind of pooch punt. Third down and seven with two and a half to play. See what he has in his tank right now. Looks like regular. <laughs> and it's Jason Witten making the catch at the 45-yard line. That wasn't super unleaded. Uh, it looks like a quarter of tank of regular. <laughs> Say this Jason Witten is something, and I think that you know, the, just moving him around, moving his splits around, you know, but still letting him end up or work in that middle is something. You know, you, you, you know, you get him tightened in there, and then you you get him, you know, in there, and then he can do these things. And there's Michael Strahan on that quarter tackle regular. <laughs> Marion Barber is the back. Romo. Moving those shoulders, buying time, but then overthrowing Witten, who had gotten open. Romo does that so well, and there's a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and, and we're just talking about, you know, him being able Holy to move in the pocket. Offense number 76, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Flozo Adams, the left tackle. But that's the thing that Tony Romo does so well is 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 buy time in the pocket. You know, I mean, you, you get a rusher coming in there, and, you know, if you get inside, he'll bounce outside. If you get up the field, he'll move up the field like he did on that last one. I like the way he talks with his hands, too. Yeah, I mean, he, he has his eyes. He's looking at all the guys, telling them what to do, gesturing with his hands. Very expressive, and he's got, he's got a tremendous sense of humor. He's just a guy who enjoys life. Seventy five yard penalty. First down. He's not enjoying life at this particular moment. After uh, two penalties for 15 yards, that one's against Leonard Davis, and it makes it first down and 25. Right, and and that's that's where an offensive line will kill you. I mean, Flozell Adams gets you 10, you go back up there, and then your guard gets you five, and and you know you just can't have those kinds of things, which is obvious. And there's Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, who. Who is really a bright? He's a bright guy. He was a bright player. He's only in his third year of coaching, right but well, he's going to be a head coach in this league in the next couple of years. Whoop. And Romo didn't know the snap was coming, so you've had two penalties and then a snap with miscommunication. Andre Garrod is the center, and it is second down and 24. They're lucky they still have the ball. The play clock was running out as that ball was snapped. You know, and he was looking, he was looking to his outside, he was looking to his right, and then when he came back, the ball was upon him. I mean, he was in no right way ready to get that snap. Right hand back in. What do you got now? Taking out of the play, the play goes to the other side. And this is Barber, no relation to Tiki, but his father, Marion Barber, played with the Jets and a few other teams. Some years back, Corey Webster, the tackle near midfield. Yeah, that's what kills you with those penalties. You don't have plays for, you know, second and 25 or whatever. Now you get, you know, that third and still long. Here you can, here you can, you know, get the ball. There would be a chance that you would, you know, get the ball in position. The better punt it is about all because you either have to get a first down or you're not going to be in field goal range on this third down play. Shotgun third down 17. Owens goes in motion toward the inside. Then comes out of the slot. And Romo will sling it to the outside. And Owens was the intended receiver, but that really wasn't close. And Tony off to a, a start tonight in which he is four of his first nine for 67 yards. So two penalties, a snap that he wasn't looking for. And now it's fourth down and 17. That's one thing they're doing new this year with Terrell Owens is moving him around. You know, last year he used to 
going to be the flanker, and he was always on the strong side outside, and you could roll to him all the time. But now with motion and slot and those types of things, it's it's tougher to get coverage to him on every play. Matt McBriar, the highest punting average in 43 years, and the Aussie booms one inside the 10. Fair caught at the seven yard line by R.W. McWhorters with 19 ticks remaining in the first quarter. So Manning comes out. Let's apply his passing rating in 2006 when throwing to individuals like Burris, who was 74 3 tumor before he got hurt, 87, and Shockey, 87.8 with seven touchdowns. You know, and I think I think last year he really missed the money tumor because he was going pretty well, and the offense was and and tumor was kind of his as security guy, his clutch guy, his go-to guy. He always knew where he was going to be. He lost him, and the whole passing game kind of went in disarray. And when they lost tumor, they lost Strahan at about that same time, and they went from six and two to two and six down the stretch, eight and eight overall as Jacobs picks his way. Up to the 13 yard line of what will be the final play of the opening quarter. So the Giants struck early, missed the extra point on a bad snap. Dallas answered with a field goal at the end of one. Giants six, Dallas three. And Sunday night football will resume after these messages. The headlines, the guys uh, providing all the information before the game. More at halftime coming your way. Meanwhile, the buzz, Randy Moss, 183 receiving yards. Roethlisberger, four touchdowns. Great debut for Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh as they bury the Browns. Start the second quarter. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrew Kramer, Irving, Texas. Second and five for the Giants at the 13-yard line. And that pass is caught at the 15-yard line by Amani Toomer. And Toomer, who was 33 years old yesterday, picks up a first down. One guy, of course, John, that the Giants will always be keeping an eye on tonight is the emerging star number 94, DeMarcus Ware. Yeah, he's one of the best pass rushers in football, and you get a guy like Wade Phillips, he's going to use him most of the time doing that. Now, on that last play, he lines up weak side all the time. The side away from the tight end is usually the pass rusher from that side. That last play, he dropped back in coverage, came across and was in on the tackle. But he'll go right or left, but usually the open side away from the strong side or tight end. Giants with a bunch right from the 20-yard line, and Manning will go to the left and reaching out and making the catch about a yard and a half shy of the first down is Jeremy Shockey. So Manning off to a nice start tonight. There's a fellow in Indianapolis who must have jumped off his couch on that first touchdown pass tonight, too. Right. He, he said, you did it, little brother, just like I did it the other night. And here we see DeMarcus Ware rushing there against David Deal. That's a matchup the Giants were worried about is, is, is Deal on Ware. And I don't know that you have to be that worried about him because I have a lot of respect for David Deal as a, as a competitive player. Now Jacobs, and he will really make you pay the price. As he picks up the first down, Jacobs up to the 32-yard line where he's tackled by Adele and Hamlin. Like you say, oop, there's a late penalty. Something happened uh, after the play. And Phillips is saying what? That's one of those post post play penalties. Ed Hockey leaves a lawyer. He'll throw the book at you. Personal foul, crack back block by the offense. The wide receiver on the right. The delay was while the official checked the yards. The penalty has to occur within five yards of the line of scrimmage. 15-yard penalty, repeat first down. I was say, what the heck is that? Yeah. It, it was, was a delay. I thought it was after the play, but I guess the official was looking to see that it was in that it was within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And that's why you had the look of exasperation on his face. We go back and take a look at it, see if we can pick it out here. Tamani Toomer right there. See, you can't come in and cut that defensive back there. You can't block him below the waist. And that was Roy Williams. So now it'll be 
first and ten and they move it back to the 17 yard line. I'll tell you penalties can make a, a game ugly quickly can't they. I mean you know we looked at the Cowboys. You know they, they had a couple penalties back to back that long yardage and now now this happens to the Giants. It's, it's second down It's second down at about 12 right now. As they change the down marker and this is Jacobs. And he'll never be easy to bring down as he takes it up to the 24 yard line. You know he does move the pile and again I think it's going to be moved more and a little easier in the third and fourth quarter. But what, what he does he's so big and so strong and he keeps his feet going that's that's a key here you know when you get get hit and they're trying to get you down keep your feet moving you know keep spinning keep going and then you know you can get plays like that obviously if you weigh 264 pounds third down and seven. Play clock down to three. Manning from the gun under pressure and then the pass is dropped by Ward. So Ward was out in the flat. Ratliff put the pressure on. Manning was able to check it off but Ward wasn't looking for it fourth down. You know that's a tough thing in the you know playing on the road getting in shotgun. You have to use silent count and those pass rushers know what the silent count is and they really get a jump on your shotgun. But you have to use it to get away from the line of scrimmage. Jeff Eagle, so old he was born before the first Super Bowl. 41, oldest in the league. Patrick Creighton to run it back. Creighton coming up the field at the 36 yard line. And it's an eight yard run back up to the 44 yard line. Romo taking over near midfield. James Butler. Making the tackle. Part of Tony Romo's legacy, of course, will be that night in Seattle. He'll have a lot of good things happen to him, but he had this happen to him. The slick ball. He was unable to get it down. It would have been an easy field goal for Gramatica. He almost was able to pick up the first down and or the touchdown as after juggling it, he runs toward the end zone, but Babino made a great saving tackle for Seattle. In fact, Dallas did get the ball back at the end of the game for a Hail Mary, but it was no good, and, and that sort of summed up Dallas's fate on that night in the Pacific Northwest last January. Marion Barber now at the 44-yard line is the back as they begin this drive near midfield. The fake to him. And then the pass to Barber. And Barber gets into giant territory. And he'll pick up a lot more than a first down as he goes all the way inside the 30 to the 28 yard line before losing his helmet. Sam Madison, who's playing with an injured hamstring, makes the stop a 29 yard gain. You know, that's a pretty good thing. When you go play action pass, and then the guy that you fake to, see Marion Barber there? You fake to him on the run, and then he sneaks out in the flat. A lot of times when, when the back fakes in there, he's lost or forgotten. And then you get Jason Witten out there blocking in front of you, you're going to get first down. Now against the four-man giant line, this is Barber coming up to make the stop. That's Wilson, second good play by Wilson, who likes to spend a lot of time as do strong safeties up against that line of scrimmage, close to it in the box. And he stops it from no game. We talked about that slick ball that night in Seattle. And you can take a look early in the fourth quarter. There was the ball. And there's the sheen on the snap to Romo. Yeah, and then that changed the rules. So now they have a, a guy that just majors in, majors in taking care of the K-ball. There he is. And they, only, they try and only use one or two per game now. That's a pretty good name. Lyndon Nixon. Second down and 10 from the 28-yard line. And that pass is incomplete. Owens, the intended receiver, Webster, blanketing him on the play. And we go to Andrea. Yeah, well, the other rule that's new as well is that the, the kicking balls are now numbered 1 through 12. And during the game, they're under the control of a league K-ball person, Dr. K, we'll call him. He carries the footballs, numbers one and two with him, and he rotates them in every kick, leaving the remaining footballs in a bag on the sideline. So, you know, no longer does the hometown ball boy or any other team official choose which K-ball is used, guys. Dr. K. 
Well, it's not always the heat either. That's right. There's a Miz doctor today, I understand, in the league. Third down and ten. Over the middle, that is caught, and Witten is stopped a little short of the first down at the 18-yard line. That's Aaron Ross making the tackle. And now let's see what Wade Phillips decides on what will be a fourth down and less than one with a little bit more than ten. Wade indicating, let us go for it. Well, you know, the fans always want to do that. I've always believed that you, you know, you you take the field goal, you put the points on the board. But, you know, this is something that is so close, and he feels that, you know, he has a big offensive line, and, you know, he wants him to be able to dominate, and this is a situation where they have to dominate. They asked for the measurement to see how much they have to go. It's a little, oh, a little less than a yard. That's the one we talked about inches. the other night. You, used to hate when the referee would do that. You'd put yeah. your punting team in and everyone would boo you. And if you knew you were going to put your punting team in, you'd tell the referee, don't do that. Don't show me how much I have. I know what I have. There's an oddity here. Last year, the Cowboys used Barber, Marion Barber, in these short yardage situations, but he was not that effective. On third and one and fourth and one, he only converted 50% of the time. That's not good. Lowest percentage in the league, as you can see, for the guys who did that with any frequency and let's see if they go to him again. Well they do have a lead blocker in there and Oliver Hoyt they have a fullback so they're in the eye formation and they can't get on a power point. And here is Barber going to the outside. He's able to turn the corner, pick up the first down, get inside the 10, dives for the end zone and gets in for the touchdown. Wade Phillips sees his Cowboys score their first touchdown on his watch, and Hoyt makes a nice block here. Right there, there's Oliver Hoyt. He makes the block. Marion Barber gets in behind him, bounces to the outside. Poor giant tackling. Now, again, the rule is now when he's airborne, the ball has to be inside the outside of the pylon. <laughs> That's right. That ball was inside at the outside of the pylon, and Marion Barber was airborne. Well, the Giants can challenge it, but I don't know if they, can, if they can win this challenge. I don't think there would be conclusive evidence. And also, even if you win the challenge, the ball is going to be spotted at the, at the half-inch line. So Coughlin is not even going to think about it. The thing you ought to think about is poor tackling and containment. Nick Falk for the extra point. So they convert on fourth and inches. Barber goes for the end zone. The Giants took the early lead, but Dallas has caught him and gone past them. 10 to 6. Yep. <laughs> Pardon? You saw the <laughs> bull ride there. You had to put the yep in there. Takes about three days down here. You begin to, to talk like a Texan. Bradshaw. Up to the 27-yard line. That's where the Giants will get in their next drive with line 34 remaining in the opening half. An exultant Wade Phillips has his Cowboys on top by four. Nine and a half to go in the half. The Giants start from the 26-yard line here on first and 10. 10-6 10 down. Short drop by Manning. Quick toss out to Burris. It's a gain of six yards. We go to Andrea. Well, both teams suffering key losses on defense for the Giants. Osin Yermanura, his x-rays on his left knee were negative, but he is out of the game. More tests expected tomorrow. And as for the Cowboys, nose tackle Jason Ferguson has an injured elbow. He, too, is done for the night. Big loss in the middle there. Jay Ratliff will see much of the action. Number 90 going over to the middle. Of course, that means, of course, on the other side, we talked about it. Strahan will see more action. Here's Jacobs now. And for the Cowboys, with a flag coming in, Jacobs taken down by Eakin and Adele at the 35, and this will be a hold here against the Giants. Offense number 76, 10-yard penalty, which is second down. That's Tom Coughlin's son-in-law, Chris Snead. You know what they're doing? They're using, you know, they really don't have a fullback on their team, so they're using Ruben Drones, their other halfback, in there as a, as a fullback, and he's really blocking pretty well. What was that? Second down, 14. We said our first coffee spill of the year. <laughs> Saved it. Drones out of the game for the moment. Second down and 14. 
What they're doing is they're using Michael Matthews, a second tight end, part of the fullback spot, and they're using Ruben Drone, so they don't have a fullback. So between those two guys, they're getting a fullback. Manning out of the gun, throws underneath to Shockey. And Jeremy lining up in the backfield that time up to the 29-yard line. You know, we talk about all the things that a quarterback has to do before the snap. He has to, you know, identify the mic. And then you can see what the Cowboys are doing. They're standing all their guys up and making it tough to identify them. So that was a shotgun thing. See, but they're all looking like middle linebackers. They're all like linebackers. And that's, that's confusing the Giants and Eli Manning a little in their identification. Third down and seven. Manning stepping up. And that gets picked off at the 40-yard line. And that is Zuck Reeves getting the start tonight because of the injury to Terrence Newman with the pick. I think Plexico Burris fell down on that one. He was he was trying to run a hook. Jock Reeves was just in behind him. Here's Plexico Burris. Watch now. The hook is where you just run up, stop, and turn. And as he went to stop and turn, he fell down. And Jock Reeves was right there. And of course, Eli Manning had the ball in, in motion. It was going, and he had to it, it had to go out there. That's what a defensive coach does. Wade Phillips. Those, those are the types of things that they look for. You know, Plexico Burris, you know, got him early in the game, and then they come back and they get one off of him when he falls down running the pattern. Fourth year for Reeves out of Purdue, his first career pick. Now Jones is in the backfield here. Barber was on for all the plays in the last series. There's a flag and a short game here for the moment to the 18-yard line and the pass rolled in by Witten. And hockey leaves had a pretty busy night tonight. You feel shift. That, that Tony Romo has a lot of confidence in Jason Witten. Anytime he gets anything like that, he got blitz pressure. The first guy that he looks for is, is Jason Witten. Illegal shift. Offense. Number 81 never got set. So there were two re men re moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Owens. You know, you know, probably why is they haven't thrown the ball yet. He hasn't caught a pass. And I've always felt with Terrell Owens, and everyone said this when he was in San Francisco, when he was in Philadelphia, when he was here at Dallas, you have to get him involved in the game early. You have to get him the ball early. He has yet to catch a pass. Witten's caught four. Barber caught one. And Jones has caught one. So not a single pass has been caught by any of the wideouts. First and 15. Jones slanting over the right side. Antonio Pierce rides with him and takes him down. Oliver Hoy provides the blocking on the play. Yeah, and they have a pretty good thing going now. You know, the, the running of Julius Jones and Marion Barber, the throwing in the middle there to Jason Witten. And then I think if they would get that third element, you know, the ball to Terrell Owens on something easy, you know, I mean, where is a slot across or something like that, that would that would add another dimension to this offense and would make it a little tougher. And that has to be on the mind of Jason Garrett. You would be well aware of that at this point. Second down and 10 at the 23-yard line. Owens wide left. Instead, they go to the inside man. That's Creighton. And he'll pick up the first down of the 11-yard line. Patrick Creighton, he gets the start because of the injury to Terry Glenn. And there's some question as to when or if Glenn can come back. Some thought about maybe even having microfracture surgery. So he will play a big part tonight and maybe for the rest of the season. And he was in the slot. But watch how quick this ball comes out. This isn't a three-step drop. This is just a one-step drop. He looks out there as a slot and he sees it. He's going to get something right now. So he just gives him the ball. Just one step. Boom, the ball comes out of there. First and ten at the 11. Six minutes to go in the half. Dallas up by four. Jones. Stopped at the eight. Second down and seven. Butler in on the tackle. Now he's talking about Brandon Jacobson going to wear down a defense, a big running back. This big offensive line of the Cowboys is kind of wearing down this giant defense. I mean, just look at these guys and the size of them in here and just the pounding. I mean, just pounding and getting the piles going back. I mean, they they are dominating the line of scrimmage now. 340, 295, 316, 354, and 315 up front. 
You know, and a 354 isn't a fat 354. No, not at all. But I've seen a lot of big old fat 354s. This isn't one of them. Second and seven, and Romo will turn it back inside. Flag comes in after the play at the six yard line. Holding offense number 65, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Senator Gerard. Just saying, you know, what a great job the inside of this Cowboy offensive line was doing. And then, and they hold, but that, that happens all the time. I mean, that's, that's part of blocking in there. And, and you get a team like the, the Giants that, you know, stunt and move a lot. And you, you, know, you, you get on your guy one way, and then we'll, sometimes they'll run themselves into a hole. That's an old offensive lineman making an excuse for an offensive the lineman line. for holding out. Well, what that was. It's the fraternity. Right. You're always going to be a member of the fraternity. Yeah, well, you always have a reason why you did that. But that is so true. You know, I mean, you go out there and you fire into a guy and he's stunting like this. And, you know, you get your hand up there and, you know, he puts himself in a holding position. Second down and 17. They can get a first down without a touchdown. Run a draw, give it to Jones to the 12 yard line, and the third down. So, what's the secret handshake for an offensive lineman? Kind of like, you know, is it a, a punch or? No, no, no. You, you, chest, <laughs> you, chest, you, know, you don't punch, there's no, no handshake. You just put and go like that to him. Just a thump, right? Yeah, it's a big, big old thump. Chest thump. That's uh, the No, but that's where it all starts. You know, we can talk about, you know, these great wide receivers, quarterbacks, you know, Randy Moss catching that. But if if the line doesn't block, if they don't control the line of scrimmage, I used to always argue with Bill Walsh about this, but it's all academic. You can have the greatest schemes, the greatest plays, the greatest pass pattern, but if this group right here doesn't do the job, it doesn't make any difference. And third and 11, they give Romo the time. Case in point, touchdown, Jason Witten over the middle. So the Giants did not put a lot of pressure on. The line did its job up front, and Witten, who lives in the middle of the field, finds the open spot, and the Dallas Cowboys lead by 10 going on 11. I'll tell you, Jason Witten has found the open spot the whole night. I mean, he's just going right up there and just settling down right between the hash marks, and it's been open this whole first half. Five catches for the Cowboy tight end tonight. And all five have been on third down. Nick Folk to the extra point. The Dallas Cowboys have run off 17 unanswered points on opening night and lead the Giants 17-6. Dallas on top by a score of 17 to 6. The pulse tonight. Manning got off to a great start. A minute and a half into the game, a touchdown to Burris. Tony Romo got off to a slower start, but he has picked it up and just hit Witten for a touchdown. There was the Burris catch, a 60 yard TD reception to account for the Giants scoring. Witten's been the big man over the middle. Owens has not caught. A pass. Here come the Giants on offense after the kick, but a big story in terms of an injury. And we'll get that from Andrea in a second as the kick is fielded by Bradshaw from a yard into the end zone. He gets popped at the 24. Andrea, what's going on with the Giants? John the news just got worse for the Giants beyond Dallas at 79 answer points. Brandon Jacobs is out. He has a sprained knee. More tests expected tomorrow in MRI. So they'll see more of Ruben Drones and, of course, Derek Ward, who did have some good success with reps in the first season. Oh, boy. So we'll go back and find that. He took himself out after the last play he was in for. And it looked innocuous. And then all of a sudden, he's out for the night. So you have Derek Ward who was drafted by the Jets and signed by the Giants as a free agent. Ward makes the team. We'll see a lot of drones and maybe some of Ahmad Bradshaw. And Manning will throw, and it's Burris who makes the catch. So Manning knowing it's really going to be on his shoulders tonight, 
hits Burris and gets the ball immediately into Cowboy territory to the 48-yard line. Right, and that's exactly where I think it goes, Al. I mean, you know, you, it's not going to be about a backup running back right now. It's going to be about Eli Manning and his receivers. And I think that somewhere he has to get the ball to Jeremy Shockey, kind of what, what the Cowboys are doing to them with Jason Witten. Picking down to three minutes. Now you've got Ward behind Drones, and Ward inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. That's Drones, former Bronco and Cleveland Brown, leading the charge that time, providing the block that helped spring up for a gain of about nine and a half. Yeah, Drones is a better blocker than I thought. I thought that would be the problem. You know, when you have a, 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 a tailback in there blocking like a fullback, but Drones is doing it. That was kind of a, a counter type of play where both the lead blocker and the running back counter. Second down and inches from the 38 yard line. Fake to Ward. Manning steps up and he hits the Ward underneath. And Ward is able to dive forward for a first down of the 29 yard line. Aiken Adell making the tackle. That was the same thing that the Cowboys did. I was talking about you go play action pass, then they kind of lose that guy that you fake the run to, and then he sneaks through and you pick him up as a pass receiver. First split left, Coomer split right. I think they have to get Shockey involved here. Shockey lined up on the right side. Shockey initially with the block. And then he loses his man and is able to accept the pass, but only for a gain of one at the 28-yard line. Pressure put on that time by DeMarcus Ware, and that takes us to the two-minute warning, which comes officially at 155. Dallas 17 and the Giants 6. The Toyota Halftime Show, Bob and the Boys. On hand from New York, best moments from Sunday afternoon. Keith will have the worst person in the NFL this week. And Tiki should have uh, a lot to say about his former teammate, teammates, especially in light of the fact that Jacobs is done for the night. Ron Springs and Everson Walls, we talked about them before the game. Andrea will talk about them. We've we'll got a halftime show coming up. But right now it's second down and eight from the 28-yard line. Manning gets hit from behind with the arm coming forward incomplete. Incomplete. Nathan Jones was there, and Ed Hockley was right there to say incomplete pass, no fumble. You know, I think if the Giants were going to hear anything from Tiki Barber, they'd like to hear that he's on his way here to play. And Brandon Jacobs goes down, and you know, I mean, they're going to miss Tiki Barber. I mean, we all know that, but just now they lose Jacobs, and oh boy, would he be a welcome guy right now? <laughs> Get out of that suit and put on one of That's these right. blue suits. Rand did it. They'll send a plane for you. Third down and eight. That's caught. Shockey. And he'll pick up the first down. So John suggested you've got to look his way a little bit more. The ball is at the 18. That'll be a first down, and the Giants will take a timeout. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by New Diet Pepsi Max with ginseng and more caffeine. Wake up, people. By Circuit City for the hottest new technology. Think Circuit City. By Farmers Insurance to find an agent near you, call 1 800 Farmers. And by Verizon Wireless. Downtown Big D on the second Sunday night of September. Jeremy Shockey was slow in getting off the field before the two minute warning, got back in, and you can tell he's in a little bit of agony right now, but a little bit of agony for him is nothing. But you just see that last play where he catches the ball, he gives him some life. I mean, he. He runs the ball like a you know a fullback in the open field. He's hard to tackle, and and you know you just talk about the Giants are kind of flat and they need energy, and I think he's the guy that can give it to him. At the 18-yard line with Ward and Drones in the backfield, and Brady James wants to call a timeout, so Dallas took a timeout, which he can do before the snap. That's their second. The Giants have two remaining. 141 to the half. Back at Texas Stadium, Jerry, Jeremy Shockey's been whacked around. That's why these guys get paid all that money. Yeah. 
Well, if it were easy, anyone would do it. After the timeout taken by Dallas, first and ten for the Giants, ball at the 18-yard line. He likes flexible Burris down here, too. He had drones split to the left. He went in motion, and now Ward gets tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. It's Jay Ratliff, who's going to play a lot more tonight because of the injury to Jason Ferguson, who's out for the rest of the night and makes the tackle. You know, talking to the Giants last night, they were all worried about Plexico Burris and if he was going to you know, be able to play, you know I mean, to have win the conditioning part of it. And a lot of the Giants look like they're sucking for wind out there now. It's not that hot for Dallas this time of year, high 70s, but humid, and as we say, the air just doesn't circulate inside the stadium. Second down and eight to the outside. That's caught by Coomer. Amani turns it back in, seeks the first down. It appears to be a little short. Reeves and Hamlin converge on the tackle. And Manning looking over to the call from Kevin Gilbride is on the mic to him. Third down and one. I think he probably wanted to know if he should have taken a timeout because they do have two of them. He said he sneaks for the first down and he gets it. So he has the first down. It'll be first and goal. Now and he'll take the timeout. And the Giants will take their second. They have one remaining. Giants first and goal when we come back. Those championship banners from the Aikman, Smith, and Irvin years. Two of them won by Jimmy Johnson, one by Barry Switzer. Hanging from the Raptors as we come back to Texas Stadium. 38 seconds. First and goal, Steve Smith, rookie wide receiver in this set for the Giants. Manning will take the snap out of the shotgun. Throws it to the outside. Caught by Coomer. Tries to get out of bounds and can't. It'll be second and goal. That's Jock Reeves making the tackle. Yeah, they may have to waste to use that last time out. I think, you know, passing is a good idea. The thing they had to do, but I think you have to throw it in the end zone. I do, too. I also would have run a play there before the timeout. Second and goal, no timeouts here, John. What's your uh, call? Well, you have to throw it in the end zone, and I would I would think you would try and get a jump ball somehow to Plexico Burris, or you would get one out here. They have Shockey split down here. That's probably where they're thinking of going. They have Burris in the slot to the left. They have Coomer wide to the left. I like this matchup down here in the bottom. Second and goal. And he throws into a lot of traffic, and he tries to go to Michael Matthews, who is a rookie tight end out of Georgia Tech, a free agent. And Michael Matthews, they tried to sneak one into a guy they thought the Cowboys wouldn't be paying any attention to. The pressure put on that time by another rookie, Anthony Spencer, number 93. Well, you see DeMarcus there. He's going to come out there. He starts on the pass rush and ends up in pretty good coverage. It wasn't a bad idea. Matthews was going to be free and would have been had DeMarcus Ware not come off. Now Matthews out, Steve Smith is in the rookie out of SC, goes wide to the left. Coomer's in the slot to the left. Burris goes to the right. Shockey lines up on the left side. That's where you'd have to like right now. Third down and goal. Looking to Burris. Throwing to Burris, and Burris got position and gets the touchdown. He got inside Jock Reeves. Hearn takes another bow. Both touchdowns tonight by number 17. Yeah, I think he's the guy that he's going to look for because you not only have a top receiver and your top receiver, but he has a height advantage, you know, on any of the defenders. So he's big. He has a big body. He can reach. He's a good receiver. And, and I think he's the type of guy that you look for down there. Last time they had an extra point attempt, Jay Alford snapped it into the turf. The rookie will snap it back to Fegels. Another low snap, but Fegels gets it down. And the kick by Tynes is good. So it yeah. should have been a three-point game. It's a four-point game at the half. Watch this. Uh, Jock Reeves is off here. And that's the way you cannot play, play Plexico Burris down there. I mean, you got to get up somewhere. You have to bump him before he gets to the goal line. You just watch Eli. He sees that all the way. He sees Jock Reeves come off. And he says, this is just like a gimme. Well, Reeves is playing because Newman is hurt. There is Terrence Newman, one of the best corners in the league. Also plays the nickel, plays the slot man when they go to the nickel. Runs back punts. Had played in 64 straight games. Worked out before the game. He has plantar fasciitis. And that foot injury puts him on the shelf tonight. But 
they think he can. Well, they said if he doesn't play tonight, they expect him back by next week. But who knows with an injury like that? Right, and that's where you go. I mean, uh, you know, you see him on the bench; he's not active. So then you go after his replacement, and then when you have Plexigo Burris against his replacement, that's a pretty good matchup. Both quarterbacks with over 100 rating, which is the sign of a good night. Tyson Thompson will run back to kick Lawrence Tynes to send it down. Bouncing ball fielded at the four. Thompson, who grew up here in Irving, Texas, drops the ball at the 25-yard line. Mix is already suggesting rather strongly that the Giants have it. Hockley and his cohorts will get to the bottom of the pile, and the Giants are certain that they've come up with it. And if they have, they are right now in field goal range. It would be about a 43-yard field goal. Michael Johnson is the guy who created the fumble. Number 43, he came in there, and so Tyson Thompson runs it back, and the Giants, of course, can run maybe one play and then attempt a field goal. Watch well, Michael Johnson here. He's going to come right through the wedge and make that tackle. There's no way that he should have been able to get through there. I mean, you have a tight wedge. He splits the wedge, which is a great play in itself, makes the tackle, which is a great play, and knocks the ball out, and they get it, which is a super great play. The Giants are going to run a play, and they have to be very careful, of course. Either you have to go to the end zone, or you have to make sure you get it out of bounds. Because right. If you don't get it out of bounds, then you have to spike it or get the field goal unit in in no time. I'd come right back to Toomer again on that fade. Now, they're not going to let him have it. They're playing off, but I would still do it. Manning going to the right corner of the end zone and diving, but out of bounds is Steve Smith. The rookie out of SC picked in the second round, but he was well out of bounds. And now Tynes will come in to try to make it a one-point game going to the locker room. Now, that was a thing that they had to do. I think, you know, you know, take a shot, take a shot for the end zone. If it's not there, throw it away. You'll get it where there's no way they can knock it down or anywhere, no way where they can intercept it so that you have the opportunity for this field goal, which... You know, it's not a chip shot, and it's not an automatic, is it? We know that from the first snap on the extra point. 44-yard field goal attempt. Both of Alfred's snaps have been low. Times the former chief who won the job over Josh Houston because of experience. That time a decent snap, good hold, and a good kick. And so the Giants, who were down by 11, and then discovered that Jacobs would be done for the night, and who knows how much longer, come back, get a touchdown, pick up a fumble on the kickoff return, get three more, and have climbed right back into it at 17-16. You know, and it all started with a, a great wedge buster. I mean, when you have the wedge there, they're holding hands. There's no way you can let a guy split the wedge. And then the wedge gets split, the ball gets knocked out, the Giants get the ball and kick a field goal. Johnson, a seventh-round draft choice. That's the last round out of Arizona. I mean, he did so many things well on that play, including putting his right hand in there and knocking that ball out. You know, we always say that, you know, it's offense, defense, and special teams, and sometimes we forget how big special teams is, especially early in the season. There's more big plays in special teams in the first three or four games of the season than there is the whole season. That's how you make the team as a seventh-round draft choice. Because you play well, especially on special teams, and he proved enough. One-point game as the Giants and the Cowboys leave the field at Texas Stadium, 17-16. The Toyota Halftime Show from New York coming up. But first, these messages from your local NBC station. That was the, the greatest off-season story of this past year. I mean, there were others that made more headlines and bigger headlines, but that was a real deal. I mean, like you say, ultimate teammate. I mean, when you can give a body part to a teammate, you're a real teammate. You're a real person. That's, that's what, you know, teammates and team and, and togetherness and all those things, it's really all about that. So we start the second half. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrew Kramer. Dallas to run it back. 
And this is Tyson Thompson who fumbled. And that led to a giant field goal running it back. Brandon Jacobs, in case you joined this late, the Giants running back got hurt. And we've gone back to find the play on which he'd gotten hurt. And it's a knee injury. He's done for the day. Right knee. And now the question becomes, how much longer? There it is, right there. And that's Anthony Spencer making contact with him. Spencer was being blocked by Kareem McKenzie. So he comes out of the game a couple of plays later. It was an interception by Jacques Reeves. Dallas led 17-6, but the Giants have come back to make it a one-point game. And now Creighton is there, but he's out of bounds on the first play of the third quarter. Let's take a look at the numbers now. Both quarterbacks with good ratings through the first 30 minutes tonight. Dallas with 60 rushing yards and the Giants with 40. But the Giants 219 total, 179 through the air, and the Dallas with a slight time of possession advantage. Another giant just limped off the field there. It's very cold field. Defensive tackle. Manny Wright comes in to replace him. William Joseph is Cofield's backup and he spasmed up his back before the game tonight. That's Julius Jones now taking it up to the 26 yard line. Yuma Yura is already out. Michael Strahan is playing sparingly. More of attrition. Brandon Jacobs is out. I wasn't kidding about Tiki. <laughs> Tiki talked about it at halftime. I would, I would bet him. Mean, this is the first game of the season, and they need a running back. I mean, who to come back in and help this team better than Tiki Barber right now? That wouldn't be a big story in New York, would it? <laughs> oh, boy. Third and seven. And that pass is caught up at the 39-yard line as Romo threads the needle, finds Creighton, the open man. Creighton again getting a start tonight because Terry Glenn is hurt, and Creighton winds up making a catch good for 14 yards. You know, I always like this about Tony Romo, the way he stands in there. I mean, he has good protection, so he can step up, but he had to step up into a rusher. And he had his guy open. I mean, there was a guy on either side, two guys behind, and he hit Patrick Creighton perfectly. I mean, first of all, you have to get the protection, you have to read the coverage, and you have to get the ball there. Romo's completed nine passes tonight, none to Owens. Here's Jones swinging to the outside, finding room across the 50 and thrust out of bounds by James Butler at the 40-yard line. I think this giant defense is really getting tired. And, uh, you know, they talked about that last night, that they were going to have to roll guys in. And here they're going to see Michael Sprayhan in there. They start a double team on him. The, the tight end, Tony Curtis, comes down. Mark Colombo's there. They get movement there, push Sprayhan to the inside, get the corner to the outside. There's no force and support. That wasn't Sprayhan. He should have had two guys outside of him. 21-yard gain for number 21. At the 40-yard line, first down. Five time with the face. Romo. And finally, it's Owens making a catch. Terrell Owens makes his first catch of the season. Good for a first down tackle by Wilson at the 23-yard line. An 18-yard game. You know, and I think this is the type of stuff they have to do to Terrell Owens. It's not leave him outside and just run him up the field. Run him across the field. Because eventually, if he keeps going across, he is going to be open at some point. Tony Romo sees it, finds that point. That's a heck of a catch because that was ball is a little high and thrown behind him. But you have to get Terrell Owens in the game. And I think when you get him in the game in the third quarter, you've really wasted a half. This drive started there 22. Now from the Giants, 22. Going to the end zone. Owens, can he hold on to it? Yes, he can for the touchdown. One hand, a juggle, has to get both feet in and did for a 22-yard touchdown. You know what he's thinking, where in the heck was that in the first half? They got him involved, then they got him playing like this. He comes in motion, and, and just that big hand stretches out, catches it with the one hand, brings it into his body. But that's, that's where Terrell Owens is so big, is that, is that when he can move and he can come across the field, 
He's still in his celebration, as a matter of fact, and they're ready to kick the extra point. But those are the types of things that you have to do. I mean, that was a you know, great play call you know, by Jason Garrett, Garrett setting up that whole thing to Carolina. Nick, they, yep. Call to the extra point. I was going to say, John, clearly Coughlin heard from the guys upstairs. Again, nothing to challenge there. It was close. I'm sure that they talked about this at halftime. Terrell Owens, no catches in the first half. Yeah, but he didn't know it would take more than a half before he got the ball. Wade Phillips was telling us yesterday the first call he got after he got the job as the head coach of the Cowboys was from Owens. Yeah, and, and just talking to Terrell Owens in practice the other day, he he feels a lot more comfortable here in Dallas than he did a year ago. Here's Bradshaw, and Bradshaw loses the ball at the 23-yard line. The seventh round draft choice out of Virginia appeared to be down, but the whistle had not blown. I'm sorry, from Marshall, the whistle had not blown. And Ed Hockley and his gang will. You know, and he admitted that he had a, a, a fumbling problem, and they worked the same things that they worked with Tiki Barber with him that high and tight way to carry it and and they got the ball back but that's the second time that he's fumbled tonight I don't know that he's going to be long for that job because he really doesn't look like a threat like he's going to really break anything and if he's going to if he's going to have that ball pop out when he goes down he's not going to be back there they don't have a lot of options at this point yeah but I would find one other than that <laughs> You know, anytime. Tiki. Any time, yeah, Tiki. We're going to have Tiki, the MVP of the, the Giants, this year's Giants, in a minute. So I think anytime you have a, a, a kick returner, the first thing you want in him is security, that he's going to hold on to the ball, he's going to catch it, and he's going to hold it. Well, the Cowboys know that. Thompson coughed it up, and it led to a field goal. Now Ward will carry. And Ward will lose the ball, but he was down. The play had been whistled dead. And Hamlin came in to slap it away, but the whistle had blown. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles lost a game today because they didn't have a punt returner that could catch the ball. Right, right. The special ball teams killed them. Second down. Kevin Gilbrod was the quarterback's coach and took over as the offensive coordinator when John Huffnagel was let go. He's on the, the mic. Manning, good first half. Burris, two touchdowns. Shockey caught five balls. Second and seven. You got drones split to the left. And Manning will go down in a heap. A lot of pressure. Jay Ratliff is there. Marcus Spears is there as well. You know, this is the, the thing where this, this Cowboy defense is a little different. It's a three-man line, but it's different from Bill Parcells. But now you always want to get someone where the back has to block him. Now, if it's an inside guy, Bill Ward doesn't have a chance. But I don't know that any running back would have a chance on that block. But a Wade Phillips three-man line is a one-gap where your guys are moving and stunning. Third down and 12. Here they come. Giants pick him up. Good blocking up front. Burris makes the catch for the 40-yard line. Blitz was on. Manning was able to hang in there, find Burris roaming free over the middle, and a third and long conversion of 20 yards. You know, they did a good job of picking up that blitz. And when you do pick up the blitz and you're in the shotgun, the quarterback is going to have time, and you know what, that you're going to have man-to-man -man coverage down the field. So when he sees the blitz, he sees it's all picked up, then he looks downfield, and the guy that he looks for again is Plexico Burris because that was his best matchup. Good block by Shockey on the cornerback, Nathan Jones, who was coming in. Cowboys rushing six that time. First and ten, the ball is at the 40-yard line. More to the outside. 
One thing about Wade Phillips, you have to love that Texas homespun humor. Speaking of the blitz, I mean, we're talking to him yesterday, and as we do with all the coaches, you know, what about your rush defense? What about your pass defense? And then we said, well, all right, how about blitzing? He says, okay, we will. <laughs> yeah, we will, we do. Going all the way back to my dad, Bob, we have. Yes, okay, it sounds like a good idea. We will. But he says that, you know, that he'll never bring three. You know, I mean, he's always going to bring four or five, and he doesn't bring three or six, although on that pass completion, he did bring six. Right, rarely does it. Second down and six, the ball at the 44-yard line. Brady James makes the tackle on Derek Ward. Bum Phillips. You know where Wade got his sense of humor from. Wade and Bum. A chip off the old block, and there was Bum. And Wade was an assistant coach. In fact, Wade succeeded his father on an interim basis with the Saints in 85. And Wade has coached two teams on his own, Buffalo and Denver. And twice he's been the interim coach for his dad at New Orleans. And then a few years ago, he succeeded Dan Reeves for part of the season in Atlanta. Right, because he's a, he's a very solid guy. Third and six. His son Wes is on this staff. And another third down conversion for Manning to Burris, who gets inside of Anthony Henry. Wade last year, the defensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers and you know that was the crazy situation where Schottenheimer was still going to be the coach Cam Cameron goes to Miami Wade comes to Dallas and then Schottenheimer gets fired a couple of weeks later right, and, and before they hired Wade they had hired Jason Garrett and Jason Garrett was either going to be the head coach or the offensive coordinator so when Wade gets a job here in Dallas he inherits Jason Garrett Manning faking and looking to his left and boy, I tell you what, Eli's doing a nice job tonight. Amani Toomer makes the catch at the 33-yard line. Manning, a lot of poise and a lot of composure, looking to his right, checking off, coming back the other way, first down. You know, and again, I get back to my offensive line that it all starts there. You know, if they give him that kind of time, then you can do that. You can look to your right. You can look to the middle and eventually get it back to the left. They, they were worried about pass protection and they were worried about DeMarcus Ware rushing from this weak side. But I'll tell you what, they have done an excellent job of pass protection. Under seven to play in the period. Eight point game. Dallas on top. Led by one at the half. Ward. Many scuffle. Brady James and Jeremy Shockey. Undercard. That's what you get when you get these rivalry games. You're always going to have those kinds of things, a little extracurricular activity, helmets flying off. Look at Brady James right there. He has a face mask, among other things. He has no helmet. That's dangerous. And when you're punching a guy that has a helmet and you don't have a hat on, you get hurt. For Snee also involved. Second and eight. Four man rush. Manning throws, and that's off the hands of Burris. Burris covered that time well by Jacques Reeves, doing a lot of throwing tonight as Jacques Reeves because he's the guy taking the spot of Terrence Newman. And he's given he's given a pretty big cushion. You know, he's putting himself, see how far back he is here? He's kind of no man's land there where you can do about anything that you want to to him. And and that ball was in there quickly, and it looked like Buxco Burris wasn't, wasn't ready, but he has to catch up. That was a good throw. Burris has caught six tonight for 25 yards and two touchdowns. Looks like he's dead tired. Yeah. Big third and eight. Manning hit as he throws, going deep for Burris, and he tips it in the air, and it's incomplete. Again, you had Reeves, and Reeves had help on play from Patrick Watkins as well. The Marcus Ware put the pressure on and got to Manning just as the ball came out. Well, that's a huge Plexico Burris up there, and they know that's where they're going to go to work, so they're going to try and get him a little help out there. That ball, I don't know, if he gets that ball out in front of him a little more, that would have been a touchdown. They would have put him in position where he had a jump ball because he did on that outside, on that second pylon, 
have a man-on-man -man situation. Now times with a 48-yard field goal attempt. The rookie Alfred to snap it. Good snap this time. Fegels puts it down. And times his kick is good. So a 48-yard field goal for the Giants makes it a five-point game. 24-19 Cowboys. Beginning of the season, the New York Giants, Sunday Night Football, it doesn't get any better than this. Everybody's watching. Your family, your friends, people that you don't even know, and people are going to let you know how you perform. Now it's time really just to make a statement. New coaches, new players have came in. The crowd, uh, the atmosphere, is making the plays. Always talking about Sunday night. What a game we have next Sunday night, too. San Diego at New England. Owens blanked in the first half, then made catches on back to back plays, including a touchdown grab here in the third quarter, ready to come back onto the field as the Cowboys get the kick. Dallas on top 24 19. Moved by Tynes, taking a yard into the end zone. Tyson Thompson, who figures to secure the ball a little bit better this time. And he's up past the 30, and it's a good run back as he's finally forced out of bounds after a nice block by Oliver Hoyt at about the 39. I'm going to have to go in the third on opening night. And Big D, that was by five. And what if you could journey back in time, change the past, and journeyman, one man can. Time changes everything. Monday, September 24th, the debut night right here on NBC. From the 38-yard line, first down, they spread it out. Now Oliver Hoyt sets up, offset in the backfield. It's in Barber in motion. And after changing the formation, the fake to Barber. And then Romo with a side armor underneath to Hoyt, who gets knocked down as the ball arrives. Justin Tuck is there. So Dallas, 24 points tonight. The Giants' D last year finishing in the bottom 10 in yards and points allowed for the first time in a quarter of a century. 27.3 over the last eight games. They lost six of those eight games, so they had to make some changes. Tim Lewis paid the price. The opponents in the red zone had the best efficiency against the Giants. So Lewis gone. He's now the secondary coach of Carolina. Spagnolo comes over to run the defense in Philadelphia. And Barber gets taken down by Jabril Wilson shortly after crossing the line of scrimmage. That's what they do. You know, you talk about that aggressive defense and what they do, you you see Jabril Wilson come up. He's a safety, and they give him a gap. You know, I mean, every, everyone has a gap, and the defensive line has a gap, and the linebackers have a gap, and then one of the safeties filling also has a gap. Third down and eight at the 39-yard line. Romo under pressure and then has to tuck it in because Jason Tuck makes him do that. Jason Tuck got there. Romo started to sling it then just had to hold it up. And so Jason Tuck gets the sack and the Cowboys forced to punt. Jason Tuck is a left end and then when you go to nickel he is going to be over the guard and you'll see him here against Kyle Kozar and he just starts to the outside then he comes back and takes that inside and when you get an inside move on a guard your next step you're on the quarterback. Second career sack for Tuck. Justin Tuck now in his third year. The quarter is back to receive the tip from McBriar. RW from the six yard line. Back out to the 19 yard line. So Justin Tuck getting a lot of action in preseason because they didn't know about Strahan. Michael's sitting out, kind of putting in retirement, but he's back. So is Tuck, and the Giants are back in business, down by five with the ball. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Chevy and American Revolution. By NikeFootball.com, leave nothing. By Sears, where it begins, and by Budweiser Select, exceptional taste, never filling. Step up to select. If you eat there, leave nothing. That's the Ranchman's Cafe, big old porterhouses, and pond rejections. From the 18 yard line, here's Manning off the fake, and then Shockey tries to one hand it with Spencer, the linebacker, covering incomplete. Let's go to Andrea. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see if the Giants continue to try and exploit the matchup of Plexico Barris on Jacques Reeves. Plexico's got two touchdowns on turns during his replacement tonight already. And Plexico is certainly confident in that matchup because walking on it up at halftime, he said, we can beat them all night, talking about 35 and 31, Jack Reeves and Roy Williams. Well, right now, the Giants down by five, at one point down by 11 and losing Jacobs. Spread it out here on second down and 10. And I like the Giants a lot better spread out than I did in tight with Brandon Jacobs. That time they get worried. For a game of seven, you know they're a long way from winning the game. But if the Giants somehow go home with a win, I mean, think about this: they lose Jacobs. You know, this is what kind of year is it going to be for Manning? What kind of year for Coughlin? They're an underdog against Dallas on a day that Philadelphia loses, going home to face Green Bay, losing Strahan for all of preseason, getting him back. I mean, this would be a, a huge opening night win for them. Right, throw in Human Europe too. Absolutely. Third down and three from the 26-yard line. Manning tries to escape and then dumps it off for Drones, and it's incomplete, but he was able to get it away. Anthony Spencer, their number one draft choice out of Purdue, put the pressure on Manning. You know, and that's, that's the thing that a Wade Phillips defense is going to have. He's going to have a big linebacker on the end of the line of scrimmage coming. And you better block him. And I'm not sure if that handoff was missed or if that were a play pass and he was going to try and throw, but someone has to block that outside linebacker. 41 year old Fiegels to punt, 20th season. Creighton to return it. Giants only have 10 guys, now they got 11. Ruben Drones was the last guy to come out of the field. Great interception at the 27 along the sideline. He's out of bounds up at the 33. Romo and company back to work. Three minutes remaining in the third period. Well, it's the rematch of that phenomenal playoff game last year with Damian Tomlinson, league MVP, Tom Brady, off to a great start already this season. San Diego and New England from Foxborough on Sunday Night Football a week from tonight. 33-yard line, you got Marion Barber starting this drive in the backfield. Owens in motion, bottom of the screen. And one with a throw over the middle. And you know who's there? Jason Witten. Once again, big first half and a big play here in the third quarter. Witten, who lives over the middle, and now Roma wants him to quickly get downfield. Right, and it goes with a play action pass. I mean, they do this so well go play action pass, hold the linebacker a little, and then get Jason Witten just working that middle in between the hashes. That has been there all night. See the play action pass? Sucks those linebackers up so Witten can get in behind them, and then that gives him pass protection time, and he's wide open. 38-yard gain. Romo wanted them to pick up the pace. The problem was the right tackle, Mark Palumbo, was shaken up, and it took all of about 15 seconds for him to get back down to the line of scrimmage. From the 29-yard line, here's Barber. To the outside, he picks up the first down. And a few more to about the 10. Kyle Kozar led the way to the left guard with a good block. You know, we were talking talking earlier how in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, running gets easier. The defense is about a half a step slower. Watch Flozell Adams get his block to the outside, just take his man and push him out. And that hole is so big for Marion Barber. And anytime there's a big run, a wide receiver has to make a block. Watch Carol Owens up on top there. When you say he doesn't do something, he also does a lot of things. First and goal. They're going to throw one. They have to throw it to Owens here. Barber. Mary Barber to the nine-yard line. Second down and goal. Under two minutes to play in the third quarter. We were talking about the big inside of this Dallas Cowboy line. The, the outside's not too bad either. When we saw Postal Adams, they're six foot seven, 340 pounds. 
and when he gets on you, he just blocks everything out. I mean, there was no way that, that half of the of the defense who were outside of him could see Marion Barber running inside. Nicknamed the hotel years ago. Second down goal from the nine yard line. Romo flushed out. Going to run for a touchdown. Matthias Kiwanuka is going to come to the inside. You'll see him come to the inside there. Tony Romo goes a play action pass, feels it, know, knows that there's no containment out there because Kiwanuka is on the inside and he just takes it into the end zone. The extra point by the rookie Nick Falk is good. Tony Romo has just scored the first touchdown of his NFL career. Quick drive, four plays, 67 yards. Dallas up by a dozen. Dallas on top, 31 to 19. Quick look at the pulse here of the game tonight. Manning with those two touchdowns, both diverse, 230 yards. Tony Romo just scored the first touchdown of his career and is thrown for a fair. And Burris on the receiving end of both of Manning's touchdown throws. Kickoff taken by Bradshaw, who fumbled the last time. He ran it back from the two, and Bradshaw gives the Giants decent field position, bringing it back to the 41-yard line. A couple of interesting things there. You know, Marion Barber was in for that set. He, he will play about every third series. And twice tonight, when they've had Barber in there, they moved down the field very quickly and scored. Yeah, and he looks he looks a little quicker than Julius Jones right now, and and the team looks quicker when he's in there. And I think that the whole Cowboy team is kind of taking that to the Giants right now. And they look fresher and faster, and they're they're beating them to the punch. Nice night for Jason Garrett calling plays for the first time in his career. The offensive coordinator, a 31-point effort through three. And Derek Ward now taking it up. To the 45 yard line. But I still like what the Giants can do. I mean, I don't think that they're through here yet because, you know, when they when they open up and they get a money tumor out there and they get flexible burst out there, and, and I like it better when they split Shockey. I mean, when they keep Shockey in tight and block him, I think that they lose a threat. I think when they you know keep it spread out, open it up, and I think they can still go after these guys and get them. Second down and six. Waning seconds of the third quarter. Toss it back to Ward. And Ward with a burst. Inside the 40, the 30, the 20, and all the way down to the 10-yard line. So the understudy now, Ward, the off-injured back, drafted originally by the Jets, picked up by the Giants, hurt in preseason last year, and having to play a huge role tonight, of course, in the absence of Jacobs. And I think this defense was, was ready for Jacobs, and they were ready to... You know, to keep everything tight and pound everything in the middle, and then that quickness, I think, really caught him there. End of the third quarter, 31-19, and Sunday Night Football back after these messages from your local station. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Gillette Deodorant. Start the fourth quarter, Al Michaels with John Madden and Andrea Kramer. We come back to Texas Stadium. The Giants... Down by 12, it was first and 10 at the 11-yard line after the third quarter ended on a 44-yard run by Ward. A little dump to him. Ward, a, a very interesting story. He's a kid from Southern California, went to Fresno State, declared academically ineligible, went to a school called Ottawa University in Kansas. Jets drafted him. Giants picked him up on waivers. He's been hurt. Been running back kicks. Over the past couple of years for the Giants, and now all of a sudden trying to become a sudden star. Well, remember in preseason when we had him, uh, Tom Coughlin really liked him because everyone assumed that Ruben Jones was the number two back, and Tom Coughlin said, no, he thought it was going to be Derek Ward. 
Second down and nine from the 10 yard line. And this time, Canton says enough of this Ward stuff. I don't know why. I mean, you know, they hit Ward there in a couple of, you know, on that big one, but I'll tell you, Plexico Burris is out here, and, and Jock Reeves is so far off him, all he has to do is, is come up and throw the ball out there. Watch Chris Canty here. He's number 99. They start a double team on him right there. He splits it because they both go off trying to get up to that second level, and they left Canty too soon. One has to stay. The other can go. They both can't go. They've got Smith and Toomer and Shockey all to the left. Forrest to the right. Manning out of the shotgun. On third down and ten. Has time. Throws. And incomplete. That's Steve Smith, the rookie out of USC who couldn't hold on. I don't know why he just doesn't look down here at Burris. I mean, this is what he does well. He's man to man. And, and he, he can win that battle every time. One earlier in that same spot in the end zone caught a 60 yarder for a touchdown. You have a flag down here. Yeah, it's not like they're doubling him or doing something to him that takes you to the other side. They just decide to go to the other side. After the play was over, delay of game by the defense, number 42, spiked the ball. That's a five yard penalty. The down count is fourth down. That's after a new the five yard penalty. That's a new rule. That's Anthony Henry because it, it's a delay of the game penalty and. The Cowboys are very lucky when they put that rule in. It wasn't with a defensive foul and automatic first down. The down counts. So it's fourth and five. Right. And here's here's Burris out here. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, that's one on one. He's going to win that battle. I mean, there's no there's no rotation towards him. There's no double coverage. There's no inside out. I think you get him down there at man to man and you have to go there. By the way, the same thing applies to the offense. This year, new rule: you spike the ball after a play like that, delay a game is the call. 24-yard attempt for Lawrence Times. Alfred snapping, Eagles holding. And the kick is good. A minute and 37 into the fourth. Giants to cut it to nine, 31 to 22. In order to win an NFC East game, you have to play four quarters. You have to be willing to commit everything. It takes courage, heart, and some hard hitting out there. 61 minutes, not 60 minutes. The NFC East is, uh, you know, what I say is the beast of the East. You know, you're going to have to execute at your best if you expect to win. You can never let up because in this division, no one ever quits. And in this division right now, the Washington Redskins are 1-0, having defeated Miami in overtime today. Philadelphia was upset by Green Bay. And the winner of this joins Washington 1-0. Nine-point lead for the Cowboys. You take the kick at the six-yard line. Tyson Thompson runs it back. He brings it back to the 30-yard line. And this becomes a pretty big defensive series for the Giants. We go to Andrea Kramer. Well, it's interesting, on the Cowboys sidelines, the players are on the bench hooked into the temperature management systems, which pumps cool air into their shoulder pads to, to cool them down. Now, Giants trainer Ronnie Barnes told me that the, that the Cowboys, excuse me, the Giants did not want to take part in that. They didn't want to inject something new to their players. So in the last series, when the offense was on the field, the defensive players were pretty gassed sitting on the, on the bench. But ironically, the one guy who seemed to have the most energy, the guy you'd least expect, Michael Strahan. And right now, the Giants have just suffered another injury. Dockery comes off, and the kicker, Lawrence Times, is being attended to at the 44-yard line. So Times, who won the job from Josh Houston, the rookie in camp, they flex his foot. We yeah, mentioned that's... Kevin Dockery going out to a backup defensive back. He was assisted off the field. There's Dockery. Yeah, I was just going to say that, that thing they were doing at Times, that's a cramp. And that's, that's what we talked about, you know, dehydration. Andrew was just talking about this, that, you know, dehydration, and then you get dehydrated and you get cramps. But very infrequently will you see the kicker being dehydrated. <laughs> you, wonder, you know, sometimes they, they probably you know, warm up so much and <laughs> kick so many balls into the net and, you know, have these little drills they do, they probably just hyperventilate themselves. I have seen yeah. that happen before. I have, yeah. I, I've, I've seen where a kicker hyperventilated. 
From the 29-yard line, Romo throws. That's caught over the middle by Creighton. And Patrick Creighton is into Giant territory. We talked about the Giants last year. This was the problem, especially down the stretch. In the second half of the season, their defense couldn't stop anybody. 25-yard game. Well, they're, they're, their defense is fired, and they're not getting any, any, any pass rush at all. I mean, that's, there's no way that a quarterback in the NFL can have this much time and not complete passes. I mean, part of that is pretty good pass protection. That one, I think, was just a very, very tired defense. Julius Jones. This time a little energy burst from Antonio Pierce, the middle linebacker to stop and back of the line of scrimmage. You know, somewhere that's going to, you know, show up. I mean, I still believe that, you know, when you when you cut down two a days and you don't hit in two a days and you don't play the guys much in preseason, then you get to the the opening game and you go boom. Okay, everyone has to play the whole game. I don't know that they're ready. I and mean, obviously some of them aren't. Second and 11. Romo over the middle. Owens inside the 20, the 10, and another TOTD. And then a flag after the end of the play. The Cowboys found something that they can do all night. Go play action pass and hit the middle of the field. Whether it's T.O. like that play or it's Jason Witten, they've been doing it all night. And so on a pretty critical defensive drive for the Giants. After the play, we go over a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness defense number 28. Pushed the player after he was well out of bounds. Touchdown. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Jabril Wilson. Now we see, you know, you know, here's Terrell Owens here. He's in the slot. Now he's just going to come up and he's going to run that same area that Jason Witten has been doing the whole game. They can put Jason Witten in there, go play play action, hit him in the middle, put Terrell Owens in there, and run the same pattern. Well, that is a would-be tackle by Butler. So a critical defensive stop for the Giants turns out to be a three-play, 71-yard drive that takes all of 101 seconds. 38-22, Cowboys. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Heineken. It's all about the beer. By DirecTV. For the most sports in HD, you have to get DirecTV. And by Viagra. Downtown Dallas, Texas. Always a beautiful sight. Overcast night. Terrell Owens did not make a catch. Didn't have a reception in the first half. And here in the second half, he scored three. Two of them for scores. 16-point game. Kickoff is fielded by Bradshaw in the end zone. So down by... Touchdowns, two possessions. 38-22, they take over at the 20-yard line. Owen scores, leading to this Coughlin reaction. Giants take over after the touchback at the 20-yard line. Eli Manning tonight, 19 out of 31 for 231 yards. From the gun, stepping up, and it begins with a 20-yard gain to Amani Toomer. He's tackled there by Anthony Henry. So the Giants down by 16, a first and 10 up at the 40-yard line. I think Eli Manning is is doing his part. You know, everyone's worried you know, about Eli Manning, how he's going to do, and the Giants will go as Eli. And tonight, it's a it's a defense. I mean, if the defense were able to stop the Cowboys. I think Eli, even without Brandon Jacobs, could really keep him in this game. The defense giving up 38 points with still 11 minutes to play. Ward inside handoff. He'll get the first down. Takes it to the Dallas 44-yard line before the ex-Seahawk Ken Hamlin makes a stop. 15-yard pickup for Ward. 
That's your right guard here, Chris Snead. He's going to pull here and lead right on War Ray Williams there. That's the first guy. When you're a guard and you pull through and you get to the secondary, the first guy you're going to look for in the white jersey is number 31, Roy Williams. Here comes Williams. They pick him up. And then the pass is caught inside the 40-yard line. That is Imani Toomer to the 36-yard line. The quarterback Nathan Jones makes the stop. And I think it was Chris Snee that got Roy Williams again. Roy Williams decided that he took one and he was going to give one. And it's, it's hard for a defensive back to run over an offensive lineman. You know, they still have that. You know, I mean, you talk about the thing, the play-action pass and the inside stuff the Cowboys have. To me, the way these corners are playing, Eli Manning could throw those out, outside receivers the rest of the game. Second and two. Right now, he gives it to Ward again on almost that same play. That inside handoff out of the gun to the 31-yard line. That'll move the chains first down. Giants injuries tonight. Significant. Jacobs, knee, he's out. Humanura went out early. Knee. Dockery was just parted off with an ankle. Manning throwing, and that'll be a nine-yard gain as Burris comes back inside Reeves to make the catch. Yeah, and you give him time, and, and he's very accurate. I mean, you get the these corners playing off, and they're just they're just giving that stuff. I mean, you can take that stuff all night, all the way down the field. But again, pretty good pass protection. You like getting the ball in there. And the giant problem has been just not enough defense. Second down and one. It's drones in the backfield. So what he's trying to do is is straighten out his protection. Hit as he throws. And that forces an incomplete pass because DeMarcus Ware came in from the defensive right side. You know, and that was the thing that, you know, we were talking to Eli Manning. That was the thing that he was worried about from the shotgun is DeMarcus Ware and, and, and how quickly he gets off. In fact, he got off so quickly, he darn near looked like he was offside, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But that's what Eli says is when you're in the shotgun, and you're using a silent count, where will jump your count? And he did then. Third down and one from the 23-yard line. Drone, former Bronco and Brown, inside the 20-yard line to the 18-yard line for a first down. Well, Roy Williams is really good. Going at it with these giant offensive linemen. Earlier we saw it was Chris Snee. That time it was Rich Seibert. We were back here. Seibert was still blocking about 20 yards away from the play. But again, that's the rivalry game. That's Giants Cowboys. That's what you're going to get. Smith to the right. Burris and Toomer to the left. Over the middle. That's caught for a first and goal. It's a Monty Toomer going back after ACL surgery and having a good opening night. He's tackled there by Patrick Watkins. And Amani Toomer has caught eight balls tonight for 90 yards. No Manning, huddle. Manning gets him right up there at the four-yard line. And because he does that, Dallas has to take a timeout. So the Giants were able to force Dallas to use a timeout. Away, Philip Shrug. Wade Phillips making his Cowboy debut. Tom Coughlin opening night his fourth year as the Giants head coach. Romo and Manning. Al, do you think if the Giants score here, they should go for two? Absolutely. Yeah, to get it to 30, and then it would be a one-score game needing another two. Right, make it a, it's a two-possession game right now. Seven and a half to play from the four-yard line on first and goal, and no play. And this is going to be a first and goal from the nine. It's a full start. Offense number 66. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. Left tackle, Dave Deal. And he's the guy that has the toughest job. He's the guy that has to block DeMarcus Ware on that 
on that weak side, and, and he knows that Ware is jumping the count, so he tries to get off with them, and if you're the offensive guy and you move it all, it's a penalty. And that, I mean, uh, uh, DeMarcus Ware caused that one. First and goal. Dump underneath. Ward, touchdown! I'll tell you, the Giants are nothing if not very resilient on a night when they lose their ace back. Just keep hanging in there. If the defense can do its job, who knows what can happen. But right now, the Cowboys are in danger of the Giants making this a one possession game as they will go for two. And it's just a little dump. He knew he was going to get a big pass rush there, so he figured out, okay, you bring your pass rush, and I'm going to throw that middle screen. And just does get in. Yes, he does. Just before that knee hit, because it's where the ball is when the knee hits. The Giants trying to make it a one possession game, going for two. As they get the touchdown with 7.20 remaining in the fourth. Manning, look out, loses the ball. And then it doesn't matter who covers it up at this point. That's the end of the play. And that was created by Anthony Spencer. So it remains a two-possession game. And there's a flag down in the, toward the right corner near the end zone at the one-yard line on the near side of the field. Illegal formation by the offense. The tight end was covered by the wideout. That penalty is declined. And the try attempt failed. So 7.20 remaining. Dallas 38, the Giants now 28 on Sunday Night Football. Stop by to see Jay Leno this week. Dennis Leary, Brad Garrett, Michael Bublé. Michael Douglas, Cirque de Soleil, Terry Bradshaw will be there. So will Kelsey Grammer. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno all this week on NBC. You know, I have a stupid question, I'm sure, but how do they have the pictures of the guys that are there already when they're going to be there this week on the Jay Leno Show? What am I missing? The only thing you're missing is that I think all of those people have been there before, so that's all file footage, right? But if, what I would want to know is how, if, if a guy goes on for the first time. Yeah, or, how they do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to check with uh, with corporate. No, but every time I've seen that, I've wondered how do they have the pictures of them being on there when they haven't been on there The rule does not enforce that foul on the kickoff. The kickoff should be from the 30-yard line. Photoshop is another option. Yeah. This is Times now who cramped up after his last kickoff. Now the Cowboys are in an onside prevent and therefore with 720 needing two scores, I don't think the onside kick here. I don't either. I don't give the Cowboys a short field at this point. And that's the kick will bounce down into the hands of Creighton. And the giant coverage here initially is pretty good, and then finally they corral him at the 23 yard line. How are the quarterbacks done tonight? Well, if you have a 146.8 rating, that's not that far for perfection. 158.3 is Thompson. For Eli, anytime you're into triple figures, you're having a good night, and he is close to 300 yards. You know, and those are two of the guys that these, you know, people were worried about, or the you know, team was worried, you know, how's Eli going to be? Don't worry about Eli. If everything around him is okay, Eli will be okay. Don't worry about Tony Romo. If everything around Romo is okay, Tony Romo will be okay. Romo averaging 21 yards per completion tonight. The ball is at the 22-yard line. Flag. And then he throws, and it's picked off at the 33-yard line by Jabril Wilson. Flag was thrown at the onset of the play. I was wondering when they were going to take that middle away. I mean, they've been the given it the giant the defense. The tight end was covered by the wideout. The penalty is declined. New York ball, first down. Wow, same infraction that uh, was called against the Giants on the two-point conversion. 
And here go the Giants now with a huge turnover and a big opportunity down by 10. The ball is at the 22-yard line. Well, they finally made an adjustment. I mean, they've been hitting that middle all night. Go play action pass, fake the run, and then coming in and hitting the middle right there. Jabril Wilson just kind of played it like a linebacker and just dropped right back in there, and Romo didn't see him. At the 22, with 7.02 remaining. Still think you have to go to Plexico Burris here right now. Burris to his left. Instead, they keep it on the ground. They go to Derek Ward. Take a look at Eli Manning when he went to the bench before it. I'm trying to well, get a I saw, loose. Yeah, I saw that. The, the doctor is there checking him, and he's he's pointing to something on his on his left shoulder. Or his right shoulder, I mean. That left arm is uh, spackled That's with the, the stuff that came up from the turf. You, know, you, don't like, you don't like to see that. You don't like to see a quarterback's right shoulder being checked. Second down and eight. To Smith. And Smith who played with the USC Trojans last year to the 15-yard line. He's tackled there by Brady James, setting up a big third down and three. And this is where the, the Cowboys come in with their dime defense. And they've they blitzed quite a bit from this defense. The, the Giants are going without a huddle and getting a shotgun, trying to catch them with 12 guys on. Now, now Peyton would have done that. Peyton would have gotten that ball snapped because the Cowboys had a substitution. They didn't get two guys off in time. Great point. Third down and three from the 15. Eli throws, and that'll be a first down as he gets into the hands of the rookie Smith again. First down at the 11-yard line. I'm just watching Plexico Burris out there, and, and, and he looks awfully tired. I mean, he's... He's the, he's the guy you need right now, and you don't know how much gas is left in that tank. Well, he, did, he didn't play at all during preseason. I know it. Leg injuries and back bothered him and all that stuff. I mean, the coverage is that they're giving him and then playing off him. You know, if they play off him, you hit him in front of him. If they, if they play tight, you just go over the top. I just throw the ball out there for him. He goes underneath, he goes to Toomer, and Toomer gets shellacked by Anthony Henry after no gain or a minimal one at best. And he gives a signal to huddle up. Second down and nine. Now they have three wide receivers in there. Toomer's going to be in the slot on the left. Smith outside. Lexigo Burris to this side. This is not a four down situation on this drive at any point. You're going to need 10 points. You can get them either way. 7 3 or 3 7. So it were settled for a field goal. It's still a one possession game at that point. Manning throwing to the end zone. And it's caught by Burris for the touchdown. You just felt that they could do that all night. I mean, why, you know, why do other things? The guy's up. They don't have a chance. I mean, Jock Reeves is on him. Williams kind of goes to that side, and he just hits it in between them. But Jock Reeves is playing off here, so he's just letting Plexico Burris do anything that he wants to. Roy Williams should have helped him on that one because, you know, he gets inside, and the ball goes right over the head of Roy Williams. When Burris is such a big target down there, this is what he does well, and just, you know, have to get the ball to him. Eight-year career for Burris. It's the first time he's had three touchdowns in the game. Tines with the extra point. What a game on opening night with 4.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Dallas Cowboys, not that long ago, up by 16, have now seen that advantage reduced to three. Because they finally took away the thing that the Cowboys have been doing all night. Play action pass, hitting it in the middle. Jabril Wilson jumped it. They got the ball. And then Eli Manning did what he had to do. This was supposed to be the New Orleans-Indianapolis game, wasn't it? 38-35? That's kind of what you expect. Now, look, you do have a double here. I mean, here's Roy Williams. Here's Jock Reeves off. And, and Puckley Burst just comes in here and gets behind him. And the ball's just thrown right over Roy Williams' head. 
I mean, he's looking back in there. Now he has to look at Plexico Burris. And that, that's one thing about Roy Williams. He's a tough guy, plays the run well, does not play the ball in the air well. And the Giants exploit that. This is the 90th meeting between these teams. They've never met in a postseason game. So all the meetings, regular season. And it equals, at this point, a mark for most points in a giant cowboy game. 1980, back before that, 73. And tonight. You know, that picture we just saw there of Eli Manning talking to the doctor is not a picture you like to see if you're a giant fan. Hmm. Tyson Thompson from the goal line. And Thompson will give the Cowboys good field position. So the Giant defense will again have to stiffen after their kicking unit allows a long run back. Some key plays tonight for the, the Giants. A little dump to Ward for the touchdown. Then the interception out of an illegal formation by the Cowboys by Jabril Wilson. And then Burris right there inside Reeves and over the head of Roy Williams. So 4 2 to play. Timeout situation is this. Dallas has two and the Giants have all three plus the two-minute warning. I think the Cowboys are going to want to go to a little run here to take some time off the clock. Julius Jones is the back. They begin with a run. And he gets stuck in the middle after a gain of about three. Michael Strahan with the tackle. And again, they're looking at Eli's shoulder with a little wincing going on. And again, it's that right shoulder. I think the doctor has his hand in there underneath the shoulder pad. You can see that he does. I mean, underneath the, the jersey. And the most interested observer is right there to off Eli's right shoulder. That's the backup quarterback, Jared Lorenzen. You know what I think he's doing? I think he's protecting Eli from cameras. Yes. And he was jumping in front of him so that the camera couldn't see what they were doing. Or at least he was for the moment. Eli wearing that C, designating one of the captains and you've seen them all day long and his action now on the left side of the offensive line with Flozell Adams who jumped first. The defensive player did not come in the neutral zone. Therefore it's a false start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty second down. Adams. Doesn't it seem like over the years that Flozell Adams leads the world in false starts? It does because I mean, we're always calling his name. You know, you, you'd think he's a bum if you only knew knew him from saying number 76. But the guy's been one of the better left tackles in the league for a long time. And he's big. And left tackle usually, you know, blocks the the best pass rusher. And he's usually open side like he is here with no tight end on his side. Has the toughest job to pass protection. He has to get a jump. Jones tries to get around Ross, and then Butler is there to corral him along in the quarters and knock him out of bounds, which is another thing that the Cowboys don't want to do at this point, stop the clock. Yeah, that's that's poor running there because, you know, once you get in this situation where you're trying to run time off the clock, you have to stay in bounds. Even if you have to make a cut before you get there, you could not get to the boundary. Now, would you think that, you know, here's a third down situation, passing situation, one they need that they probably go to Jason Witten here? Well, it's a very big play because, among other things, when you get the first down, you start making the Giants use their timeouts on defense. Witten, of course, lives over the middle. Romo looks to the outside, finds the open man, and this time it's Sam Hurd, his first catch of the night, touchdown. 51 yards on a third and seven to a guy who wouldn't have played at all in all likelihood if Terry Glenn had been healthy tonight. Heard normally the number four guy becomes number three tonight. Right, Sam Hurd gets inside R.W. McQuarters. Watch him, he's up here on top. He gets the inside right there and Romo zips it in. I mean, boy, did, did Tony Romo get back there and quickly get rid of that ball? And he put it right on target. You said that was a big, big third down play. And Tony Romo and the Cowboys made it. May have been the sealer. Bolt for the extra point with 3.03 remaining in the fourth quarter. You want to get into the end zone tonight? Just wear number 17. Look at that. You see the owner of the Cowboys, Jerry Jones, in there. You'd think that that one would give him a little relaxation. But... 
There's no way Jerry Jones is relaxing now. Not tonight. But watch how quickly Romo gets rid of the ball. I mean, it's up. He sees it. Boom. That thing comes right out of there and is a perfect pass. Sam Hurd got that one step inside of McWhorter's, and that was all he needed for Tony Romo to get him the ball. And think about Jason Garrett, John. You were talking about the fact, I mean, it's Garrett's play call. You've got, as Jerry Jones reacts to the play right after it happens, Witten over the middle. I thought they would do that, too. Then you've got right. Owens, of course, who's your big guy as well. Obviously, you can go to him. But Garrett calls as you look at Lorenzen with a helmet on, and that indicates he's going to come in. So the Giants just have another thing that's going on right now. But Garrett calling Sam Hurd's number. The element of surprise, bingo. Well, you know, it's one of those things you put an overload at the offensive left, left Hurd out there single on the right side, and had him run a slam. Three yards into the end zone, Bradshaw. Seventh round draft choice. From Marshall up to the 34 yard line, he goes. And now we'll see about the Giants, and it's going to be Lorenzen. So, of all things, on a night when the Giants have lost Jacobs, when Human Ura gets hurt, when the team turns in an unbelievably gutty performance by not falling apart, by hanging in there, by getting within three just moments ago, now you've got another problem. And right. a big one. Right. And he, Eli Manning looks so good. I mean, it looked like, you know, Brandon Jacobs, oh, no, we, we lost our runner. They just opened it up, spread it out. Good pass protection. He was calm in the pocket. And, you know, everyone says he has to take the next step. He looked like he had taken the next step. Lorenzen, who's the heaviest quarterback in the league without question, throws. And that's caught up at the 41-yard line. So they'll, he dinks and dunks, and the Cowboys will let him do all of that underneath. As Steve Smith makes the catch. Lorenzen 6'4", 285 out of Kentucky. So a lot of action in preseason. Bruised right shoulder on Eli is the word from the giant medical staff. And then that's caught and then dropped and then they say incomplete. Schumer never had possession. That'll make it third down. Yeah, and I hope if you're, again, a giant fan, you cross your fingers that Bruise right shoulder is right. That it's not a separated shoulder or a dislocation or one of those other things. I mean, the good news would be bruise right shoulder. Right. Best case basis. Giants home next week. Play Green Bay at Giants Stadium. Then go to Washington. Then home against Philadelphia on a Sunday night. Or third down and four from the 40-yard line. Lorenzen going deep and incomplete intended for Burris. You have a fourth down. Now the Giants have all of their timeouts. You have three timeouts and you have the two-minute warnings. You have four clock stoppages. You get the backup quarterback here, but it's a it's a two-possession game, and so you're compelled to go for it. And here's Manning getting dumped, and this is probably where it happened. Yeah, you can see that as he was pulled down, he's thrown right on his right shoulder. You see, right on that, sometimes it's the elbow that, you know, jams the shoulder, but it was right on that right side of his arm. That was Anthony Spencer. Now Lorenzen's going to take off, and Lorenzen, of all things, kind of slides to a hold. A sloppy slide, but in a situation where you have to go for the first down, and if ever you're compelled to go head first and die for it, it was right there. And you see the official bring the ball back. That won't even be close. Right. And they'll turn the ball over on downs. Yeah, I was going to say, where Lorenzen put it down, it looked like a first down. Where the official spotted it down, it sure doesn't look close to a first down, does it? It won't be. And that's one of those times when if ever you're going you're gonna to go head first, that's the point you have to do it. Instead, Dallas will get the ball. The Giants are going to have to use their timeouts defensively. If they can stop them, they will definitely get the ball back, at least for one possession. And there are the Giant injuries tonight. And you've got three starters and the backup corner and special teams guy in Dockery. You know, and that's something, you know, you always go through the preseason, and, you know, preseason's too long, practice is too hard. We worry about guys getting hurt, and then 
you still have to play the season. It's still tackle football. At the 43-yard line. Has to try to get a timeout before the two-minute warning. So it goes very quickly here. Barber takes it, but now you got the problem with with the with the Cowboys coming up with the first down. Among the things you're going to have to do to take your timeouts on defense to make it worth is stop them from getting a first down. Instead, it's about an eight-yard pickup for Barber as we come to the two-minute warning. In a wild one, it's Dallas by ten. And that's going to be a real beauty from Foxborough. If you look through the hole in the roof of the stadium, which is in its next to last year, you'll open up new digs in Arlington in 09, the horse trailer player of the game. We're going to have Tiki Barber join us from the studio in New York after the game. And then Tony Romo, assuming the score holds, will be Andrea's interview at the end of the game. But right now, the Dallas Cowboys have a second and two. The Giants have all of their timeouts. But the Giants just have to stop them here to make those timeouts worth anything. And Barber's going to pick up a first down, so that's going to move the change to the 31-yard line. It's going to be first down, and the Giants, regardless of whether it's a third down or first, have to use their first timeout here. Fantasy football. You can win 100000 bucks. I heard Chris Collinsworth tell me that in the promo at halftime. The 100K.NBCSports.com. Log on. And NFL.com is another spot you can log on to check out a lot of good stuff. You know, did you see that list of stuff we're going to have after the game? That's, the, that's good uh, no, stuff. no, the horse trailer and Tony Romo interview and Tiki and all that stuff. I think number one and number three are going to be the same. Uh, yeah. Horse trailer and Tony Romo, it, maybe? It could, well, right now, 15 to 24, 345, and four touchdowns. If that doesn't get you on the horse trailer, it's a bunch of, well, you know what, the 31 yard line. No, but he still had to wait <laughs> until that until that last play to hurt. I mean, he still needed that. Yep, you know, like true. you said, third down. I mean, that was one of the biggest plays of the game. And he goes back there and, and not only hit, you know, obviously looking for a first down, and he hits him for a touchdown. and that was really the capper. Remember the other night, if you watched the Thursday night game, we talked about the fact that Drew Brees came within a hair of establishing an NFL record for lowest yards per completion in a game, minimum 25. He was at like 6.2, but Chris Wenke got the record back when he completed a pass when Drew did the other night. Here's Romo tonight averaging over 23 yards per completion, something a Cowboy quarterback hasn't done since Staubach. In 71, second down and nine from the 31 yard line. Barber to the 24 yard line. I mean, this giant defense, I know they, you know, have injuries and, and so on, but they still have to retool this thing. I mean, Tony Romo and the, the job that he did slicing them up is one thing, but, uh, you know, their coverage, their tackling, their pass rush. Their conditioning uh, defensively left a lot to be desired. I think. Giants had to take a timeout. Romo is going to lead the league in passing yardage after week one, 345. Josh McCown for Oakland today in the loss to Detroit. Manning right now at 312. Eli, that is, would be third. Jay Cutler threw for 304 in Denver's win against Buffalo. Third and a deuce. And Barber will get close to a first down. Now you talk about, you know, a team and, you know, a player giving that team life. Don't you feel that Tony Romo, I mean, the way he played tonight, he just, you know, has fun. I mean, he had said that in one of those interviews. You know, I just want to go out there and have fun. And, of course, you want to go out there and do a heck of a lot more than have fun, but in doing so, he does look like he has fun, doesn't he? He has a, a, a lot of fun, and we were surprised last year as they measure here to see whether it's going to be a first down or fourth down at the, the poise and composure that every quarterback, successful quarterback, is going to need. But 
when we were with him last year and he was making his first start in Charlotte. He's just a guy that he's got a sparkle and a glint. And we've been around him now enough in, in other situations where he just he has a good time. He just enjoys life, enjoys himself. Very bright guy with a great sense of humor. Right. He played in that golf tournament up there in Tahoe that you played he, in. He, and he did. He said he kind of went in there and he was sitting in the locker room and he didn't know how to act or react. He saw all the guys and and you know kind of you know he's a Dallas Cowboy quarterback and he said Mark Rippon, the old Redskin Burbank golfer, walks by and says, "Hey Drew." <laughs> But here I thought I was a guy. I'm Tony Rope. He says, hey, Drew. And nobody got a bigger kick out of it than Tony. Yeah, right. I mean, the fact that you know, he told us that. And you can tell right here, he's, you know, he and Ed Hockley are having a good time. But I wonder which Drew their second. Mark Rippon second. thought he was. Do you think he was Drew Bledsoe? I think it was Drew Brees. Drew Henson. Could have been Drew Henson. Drew, yeah, yeah, he brought up Drew Henson. Promo tonight. That's a big night. It's a, a really big night. Owens blanked in the first half and two touchdowns in the second. Witten, as usual, the guy you can count on over the middle, lives between the hashes. Six receptions, one touchdown. Yeah, we always talk about, you know, the adjustments that you make at halftime. And I think the Cowboys made a good adjustment at halftime in getting T.O. involved in the game. He didn't catch a pass in the first half. So I know that's something that Tony Romo talked about. I know that's something that T.O. talked about and something that Jason Garrett talked about and then came out in the second half and did something about it. Giants don't have a timeout. Romo can officially end it with a first down and he just leans his way for a couple of inches and they, that may be enough for a first down. He will shock you tonight. Five catches, 41 yards. That was a first down. And now they just have to run off a couple of plays, and that'll end the game. Tom Coughlin looks like he's in shock. And it may not be the loss of the game. It could be the injury to Eli Manning. Yep, Manning, Jacobs. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff going on. You, Manura, you know, Strahan still kind of working his way back into, into, into playing shape. And when your starting quarterback plays that well and has that look at the end of the game, that's not good. Tony Romo. Well, he doesn't even have to snap the ball here. He's on the wrong side of the line of scrimmage to snap it. Wade Phillips, who probably never thought he'd get another head coaching opportunity after Buffalo and Denver, and then I think just. Not resign, but I think he just felt, you know what, he was going to be a defensive coordinator, and then all of a sudden, up pops the Dallas Cowboy job, and he wins in the opener. And he said there were times that he thought maybe he would be in line for a head coaching job and didn't hear from anyone. And then this time he was kind of, you know, satisfied being there in San Diego, and up pops a great opportunity for him. Dallas beats the Giants 45-35, Tiki and company and a lot of other stuff coming up on the postgame.